And today's lesson, we're showing public on YouTube. Please um, subscribe to the channel. So don't forget to click your like and subscribe. Now, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You've gone again. Can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. All right. Oh, boy. I'm telling you, technology yes, sometimes no. literally, literally drives me crazy. All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another session of the Natural Remedies Kitchen Vegan Nutrition Cooking and Nutrition Course. And I am here greeting you from lovely, sunny, windy Jamaica, um, land, sea, and water, absolutely beautiful. Just wish you were all here to enjoy some of this lovely breeze. Anyway, while you're not here, I pray that you will get good weather where you are. We are, we are, we are. You are. You all are. right. So Because we are freezing freezing oh boy come on over here yeah, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> come on right over here right over here where it's it's sunny 24 12 months of the year all right always warm wow. and nice yes it's a blessing from the lord all right uh, this time speaking of blessings i know with this course we are completely blessed with a lot of beautiful food on our tables and some really nice spread and as we go deeper and deeper into this course the more it gets exciting and the more our tables looks like that of a king however with that said i just want to remind us at this time there are always those around us who are less fortunate who will need our help. So we should go out, especially as we have these excess food and go searching for them and feeding the poor, feeding the homeless, helping the sick with some of these wonderful foods and wonderful ideas that we learn at this class. And at this time, just a little nugget for you as we just to go a little bit into what the Lord desires for us. And I am reading from one of the recommended books for this course, Councils on Diet and Foods, and it says Control of Appetite. It says a failure in self-control is the first sin. Adam and Eve in Eden were noble in stature and perfect in symmetry and beauty. They were sinless and in perfect health. What a contrast to the human race now. Beauty is gone. Perfect health is not known. Everywhere we look, we see disease, deformity, and imbecility. I inquired the cause of this wonderful degeneracy and was pointed back to Eden. The beautiful Eve was beguiled by the serpent to eat of the fruit of the only tree of which God had forbidden them to eat or even touch it, lest they die. Eve had everything to make her happy, 
she was surrounded by fruit of every variety. Yet the fruit of the forbidden tree appeared more desirable to her than the fruit of all the other trees in the garden of which she could freely eat. She was intemperate in her desires. She ate and through her influence, her husband ate also. And a curse rested upon them both. The earth also was cursed because of their sin. And since the fall, intemperance in almost every form has existed. The appetite, and I'll repeat that, the appetite has controlled reason. The human family have followed in a course of disobedience. And like Eve, have been beguiled by Satan to disregard the prohibitions God has made, flattering themselves that the consequences would not be as fearful as had been apprehended. The human family have violated the laws of health and have run to excess in almost everything. Disease has been steadily increasing. The cause has been followed by the effect. Now, just a reminder, let not appetite control our desires. We should have control over our desires. The taste buds are very small and by no means they should run things. By no means they should be in charge. So take captive of our taste buds and eat. Don't let gluttony be the order of the day. Don't eat excessively, but just eat until you're full. Um, don't overindulge. And in all things, be temperate. Just want to ask us to pray. I will ask Bayesian Beauty if she could pray for us, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for another day that you've allowed us to see. Thank you for those of us who have already been to work and done our day's duty. And as we come into this class now, we ask that you'll go before us. Help that what we've just heard will register in our heads, in our brains, and may we, when tempted to overeat and to overindulge, we will remember what you are, the advice you have given to us. Now, please be with each person bowed before you as they prepare the meal, the, um, the recipe tonight. Help that it may be interesting, I know it is, and that they will want to do it and that we will all gain a benefit from it. Thank you, Lord, for our teachers and our, for our directors, Sister Davinia, Lucy, and Sister Myrtle and Sister Loy. Yes, that you'll be with each one of them as they plan these programs. Thank you, Lord, for listening and thank you for answering these and all the unspoken requests of our hearts. I ask in your most holy and precious name that everyone say amen. Amen. All right. Thank you very much. Amen. Um, thank you very much, Bayesian Beauty, and welcome, everyone. I just want to say Bayesian Beauty is a past student of this course, and she is from Cooking Group 5, I think, or is it Group 4? Oh, you're on mute. Five. Group five, right. And she is one of those students that excelled very well um, on the course. And today we have invited her back to demonstrate some of the creams of which we will go into a little bit later. And I just want to say well done as well to Bayesian Beauty who has also run with the business aspect. She has taken that practically on board the business aspect of this course. And she is now a proper entrepreneur. So she will tell you more a little bit later when she <laughs> tells us a little bit about herself. So at this time, we will introduce our speaker, Sonia Barnes. By the way, let me find her and make her um, host, co-host. Right. So at this time, we will introduce Sonia Barnes, who will present to us on legumes. And then followed by Sonia, we will have 
either myself or Myrtle who will do nut milk. I will give Myrtle the choice because I know she's at work and um, her time is a little bit squeezed. So if she wants to go first, um, ha I'm happy for her to go first. And then after the nut milk and the bean milk, then we will have Harriet doing onion cream. And Harriet is Bayesian beauty, by the way. Uh, <laughs> she'll be doing the onion cream, the cashew cream, and the, and the onion cashew double cream. We will yeah. then have myself following after that with the low fat cream the soya single cream sweet cream sour cream and let's see if we can squeeze mayonnaise inside that as well and at this time just want to say welcome to sonia let's find sonia on my screen lovely here. Yeah. Welcome, Sonny Barnes. Sonny Barnes is also a faithful past student of every single module. <laughs> and, um, I just love the food. <laughs> she loves, she's here for the food. Sonia is a naturopathic nutritionist that runs her own ministry called Access for Health. And um, she is a woman of the Lord's work. She is also a member of a GMM, which you, well, most of you probably already know her face. And um, Sonia, we just want to say thank you very much for taking up this invitation of um, presenting to us on uh, legumes. And I must say to everyone at this time, this is the lecture where you must take out your pens and your papers and make notes. You have to make notes. You will see a lot of these questions on the exam. You cannot get life any easier than that. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Sonia, it's all yours. Thank you, thank you. Big thanks to the Natural Remedies Kitchen and the Vienna for invite me back to cover this session in terms of legumes. A very, very, very interesting topic, of course. Um, there's a lot of controversial things out there on the internet in terms of why you should and why you shouldn't partake of legumes. So I'm going to share, I, Sister Devine, I had some questions on the poll some weeks ago, but I don't think it's probably exists anymore because I just wanted ah. to, yes, um, I'm not, Actually, probably, a, 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 yeah, it's probably a different Zoom. Um, yes, yes, yes. That's fine. That's okay. That's all right. So I'm just trying to share my screen. I like polls because polls do help to um, bring the topic alive sometimes. And in terms of what's the general consensus, what's the um, understanding of the topic as well too helps to gauge. So make room for legumes, make room. Why do I say that? Well, in the year 2016, just not too long ago, United Nations declared that the year 2016 was a year of pulses, the year of pulses. And because they realized that so many um, parts of the world are now indulging more into a plant-based diet. And of course, the use of legumes, of course, of, the, of these various types have been so readily accepted in different races, in different parts of the world and in our homes. So they declared 2016 as the year of legumes. Now, legumes, as we know, they are cheap and cheerful, but not only that, they are very nutritious, as you see as I go on in the slides, how important we need to, we need to use these in our diet. So if you're an individual who's still skeptical of, let's just say, soya, how do you use that? If you're still a bit skeptical of, do I include that in my diet? Do I give that to my children, to my family? And I hope at the end of the presentation, you're a little bit more closer in accepting that, but not only that, that you will be more intrigued and stirred up to do a little bit more research for yourself. So then you become more comfortable 
in incorporating that into your diet. So what is legumes? So what are we talking about here? So legumes is a fruit or the seed of plants of the legume family. So when we say legumes, we're talking about peas. If you can think of different peas that you're quite familiar with or beans used for foods. So to put it simply, legumes include any fruit or seed of a plant in the Fabaceae family, which includes around 19,500 different species and 751 genera of plants, a different range of plants. So beans, lentils, peanuts, peas are all few of the most commonly common types of legumes that are consumed around the world. Often I hear beans, legumes, are they the same? And sometimes there can be a little bit of confusion. So let's just try and um, clarify that for us or to make that a little bit more, more clear. So what is the difference between beans and legumes? Mm -hmm. Which beans are legumes? And are there any beans that are not legumes? So the biggest difference, let's move this here. Um, right, move this other way. Okay, oops. Just trying to move faces on the screen so I can see, right. The biggest difference between legumes and beans is not, is that not all legumes are beans, but all beans are considered legumes. This is because legumes are defined as the fruit or the seeds of plants in the Fabius family, which includes beans, lentils, peas, and, and nuts, peanuts. So beans, on the other hand, are seeds of different, several different plants, varieties, including black bean, Glycine max, which is, of course, that's the, that's the name for soya bean, or just move this up a bit. Can't just see my screen in a minute. Of, of the family. So, so this, this is basic, basic, basically a difference between legumes and beans because all these plants, are, they are classified as legumes. So here are some popular ones, chickpeas, lentils, peas, soybeans, clover, alfalfa, carib, tamarind, and of course beans. So we know how we have a variety of beans. And what pleases me and pleases my heart, my heart, my heart glad and warm to this, is that God knows what we need. He provides us with the food that we require. And when, you know, Coming to the Natural Remedies course is just one step closer to identifying and accepting how a variety of foods and dishes that you can make for yourself and your family. And also that what you may look as a boring red kidney bean sitting in a bag or in a tin, that you can turn that product in so many lovely dishes which I'm sure a lot of you have been um, doing very well so far on the course and making dishes and surprising yourself, surprising your family of the things you can do with just a simple food that God has created. You see, the beauty of going the plant-based world or root or incorporating that more into your diet as against to animal, you see the animal, bless them, they have to eat the plants in order to give us the nutrients. But just the plants on their own, they already produce what we require. And that's the beauty of incorporating more and more of these lovely foods into your, into your diet. Now, this presentation is, will be mainly looking at, because there's tons and widespread um, surveys and research done about legumes, beans, soya, peanuts, you name it. And people are still skeptical. There's a big controversy still going on. But as I do the research, more and more and more are being accepted that, hey, these foods need to be a part of, and they are not adversely to bring harm to the body. As is often said, oh, be careful of soya bean. Don't eat too much tofu. 
don't have the soy milk because it's going to increase your estrogen levels and, you know, causing cancer and low blood pressure and weight gain, all these beans, all these fibers, all these carbs, cut out the carbs out the diet because they're not that very good. You're going to put on extra blessings on the hips and all around the body where you don't need them. Just cut them out. But the research is overwhelming now. And so I'm sure you'll be even start getting your phones out to see, okay, what are some of the benefits of the, of, of, of the beans and the legumes? So what are some of the research is saying? And as I said to you, this is to encourage you to dig a little bit more for yourself if you haven't been doing so. And even if you have, and you need to convince maybe a family member, get the research up, but ensure that the research from a good quality um, source. So after 19 years, people who ate legumes four times a week had 20, let me just put this here. Yeah, had 22% lower risk of heart disease and 11% lower risk of cardiovascular diseases. So it could be stroke, heart attack, than those who ate legumes less than once weekly. Researchers studied over 20,000 men and women concluded that there was an independent relationship of the resting heart rate and cardiovascular disease. Independent meaning that certain factors were weeded out statistically to confirm that the resting heart rate is not just a byproduct of poor heart rate, poor heart health, but rather a cause of it. So of course, those who uh, were in the group that um, for the study, for legumes group, they saw that many benefits from the intervention of including legumes. And there was a significant drop in this cytolic blood pressure. So their resting heart rate also dropped 3.1 beats per, per minute. All right. And there are more that the researchers are saying about legumes. Eating tofu once more than once a week reduces the risk of heart disease by 18%. And that was from a study of 200,000 people over 30 year fines. The benefit was more pro pronounced among young women before menopause and postmenopausal women who were not taking hormones. So we know women go through changes during their lifetime. And there's a particular part of the, the postmenopausal menopause where nutrients in the body, so or hormones, estrogen and progesterone, the two in hormones that dance together they decrease. In terms of other nutrients as well too, often sometimes are decreased because the body then pulls other nutrients from the body, namely calcium and magnesium. Pull it from the muscles, pull it from the bones in order to help you to survive. But sometimes we still feel the aches and pains of these. But this which is saying just by eating more tofu has its great benefits. Okay, in another one that says population studies have indicated that in regions where people consume more soy. So we know, already know, that a lot of people um, in Asian, so we talk of Japanese, Korean women, all those women that have been in China, have been um, incorporating soy in their diet from over 2000 years, a long time. And because, and those women are less, um, they, they, they fear less in terms of some of the illnesses that the more Westerners like ourselves have to encounter. So it lowers incident of age-related mental disorders as well too. So soy, legumes, they all have a positive effect on the mental health, whether it's Alzheimer's, um, dementia, you name it, low mood, depression will have an, a positive impact on that. Here again, the findings suggest that all women might see improved bone strength, mentioned earlier, adding some soy-based um, foods to their diet. So whether it's soya milk, tofu, and I know you might be thinking, soya milk, tofu. Haven't I been told to stay away from that? Don't give those foods to my family, especially my girls, my women, old boys. Boys may start developing more breast, more um, body parts that they shouldn't have in the first place. Why is that? Why is the research saying all of this? Let's just have a quick look 
at some of the nutrients in these legumes. High in folate, potassium, iron, magnesium. Let me just stop here to say magnesium is what I refer to also as a Cinderella uh, mineral. It's a mineral, magnesium mineral. And oftentimes, if you're in a situation where you're feeling stressed, prolonged stress, the very first um, mineral that the body calls on is magnesium. So Cinderella, always there to mop up and to do all the hard work, but gets depleted. So if your diet's not including foods with magnesium, then quite, you know, you probably be stressed for a longer period of time or, but not only that, you then have a negative effect on other parts of the body because magnesium is responsible for over 300 biochemical functions in the body. Some studies say over 600 biochemical functions. Magnesium is one of the fourth abundant mineral that the body requires. It needs that on a daily basis. So the diet, diet should be having for women should be at least 330 grams a day. And for men, a bit more, 420 milligrams. Okay, so soluble and insoluble fiber. Fiber, fiber, fiber. You've been told to eat your fruits, vegetables, to get your fiber in, soluble and insoluble fiber. So the legumes, what they, what they do when they come in is that fiber is so beneficial to the body. It gets rid of excess cholesterol. Of course, we know the liver produces cholesterol and we are told about the good cholesterol and the not so good, the bad cholesterol. It's same cholesterol. It's that the cholesterol that is moving just freshly made from the liver is the, what called the good one, HDL. When it circulates and does its jobs, because cholesterol is there to mop up and to fix cracks in the, in, all across the body. And of course, needs that in the brain, right? So when it does all the cleaning up and circulating back into the liver, then it's then classified as the bad cholesterol. Yes, because it's bringing all the stuff, unwanted stuff back in for the liver to do its thing, to clean up, to send back out again. Of course, that um, the fiber also helps with the healing process in the body with cholesterol. So that's why it will lower your cholesterol levels, which means it lowers the bad cholesterol. Good source of protein. Now, legumes, protein. For those who you need to convince that meat is not the all and be all and all, incorporate or plant-based protein in our diet. The, the, the body. Um, identifies and works much better with this protein. Mix with your protein, so your legumes with some rice or other grains, where it helps give it a complete protein. Because the argument out there will say, okay, well, the animal protein is basically got the all nine amino acids in it, and the, the plant doesn't. However, combination, combination of, of, of some grains will give it the completeness that it needs. Zinc. Zinc is another mineral that is so um, fights with, I say fights with copper. They, you know, they work with each other very closely, but one always try to push one out of the, of the bloodstream or, or out of the body. And, but zinc is so crucial for the neurotransmitters in the gut and in the brain, so the, the, the nervous system. So we eat our zinc rich foods, legumes, then we make some really good neurotransmitters in the gut, like your serotonin, your dopamine, all that's happening down there to, 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 to boost your moods and how you feel about things. Manganese, B vitamins. B vitamins are quickly just mentioned that helps with your um, central nervous system, but the energy in breaking down your food. So when you eat that lovely food, you need B vitamins. And we know there's a quite a few different B vitamins that we're talking about. One, two, three, five, six, um, eight, seven, eight, and nine. Copper, you mentioned copper as well too, helps with um, the healing. Copper and zinc work very closely together. And when you're taking copper, usually when you, when you take a supplement with copper, I always advise you to take copper and zinc together, not just one, because when you have an over, overabundance of, of, of one, you don't want that. You want both work in synergy with each other. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates in that these legumes will make you feel fuller for longer as well too. So, and it's very good carbs. It's bringing the fiber in as well too. Antioxidants. 
the determination of new cells. You always hear about antioxidants. Eat your fruits and vegetables to get your antioxidants. Well, legumes have that as well. The phytochemicals. Now, these phytochemicals is what the plant has. As I mentioned earlier, with the animal, they have to eat the plants to produce what the body will require, need. But with the plants, we have the phytochemicals and these phytochemicals already, it's like the immune system for the plant. So they're there to ward off any fungus, bacteria that, the, that will invade the plant. So when we eat this legume, we already have that going on. Talk about protein and legumes. Let's leave a quick um, snapshot of the various proteins, albumin, globulin, and glutalin, um, and the various beans that will give you the, the amount that's required. So I'm just trying to paint a good picture here, put a picture of how important legumes is in the diet. So albumin, you know, of course, is the liver. And from the um, soya bean, I just want to pick up on soya bean here, we can have 10 to 20% there, is called P, 20 to 25%. The um, ground nuts as well too, nuts will also give more on um, when it comes to the albumin, which, which is the protein in the, in the blood for, for, the, for, the, for the liver. So legumes, trying to paint more picture and said this, this presentation is, is more in, on homing on focusing more on why you should include this in the diet because there's tons and tons of research there. So I'm actually picking up some key words that you may hear of, which may come in your exam as Sudavina said, but for you also have an understanding of what these terminologies are. So you hear of phytoestrogen, plant-based, acts like estrogen like um, in, the, in the body, just like the estrogen that we have in our body. The phytoestrogen, then we have, it's broken down into various three parts, isoflavones. And this here is, a, it's a, poly, a polyphenolic compound. That's the compound that acts like the estrogen-like effects in the body. So soya bean, very, very high in isoflavones, more than chickpea, monk bean. But of course, it has all this in it as well. The comistins is also a polyphenol, but one that is less spoken of. Again, a phytoestrogen, but it's also, um, you can find it in monk beans, alfalfa, and clover sprouts. Lignans, you may often hear, which are probably common to in your studies in your, in your, in your training, about linseed or flax seeds. And so this is a steroid-like chemical found in um, this is lignans which comes on the banner of your phytoestrogen. Now, the studies are wide, overwhelming studies that these phytoestrogen, they lower risk of heart rate, menstrual symptoms, osteoporosis and breast cancer. Another, one part of the isoflavone is broken down into two parts. Now, this is where the um, controversy goes on and on because what some of the studies are saying is that um, isoflavonoids, they cause cancer. But the beauty of the plant that has isoflavonoids has these two compounds, which I'm gonna talk about here, these two compounds, jejenistein and the diastein. It's so, you know, when I, when I actually, did the studies on this, I realized how God is amazing because these two compounds, although they, some of them can in, in, um, increase your um, estrogen level, but the thing in terms of breast cancer, because this is the, this is the, the, um, the fear that they will cause breast cancer because they increase the estrogen in the body. But in terms of the, the, um, the, the studies, they reduce the risk of cancers. They reduce the risk of cancers. Now, I've only just um, shared here one study, but there are a number of studies out there. And this study here was from um, PubMed. And I've just had the results and the conclusion here. Mm -hmm. So the studies that says, you know, the estrogen receptor modulators, genistein and the diastein. So 
the Jensen diocese, what they do, they look for um, the cells in the body to bind with, to hold on to. So it's like you have your, your house, your, your lock, and you're entering your house and you put your key into the lock. Now, if it's the wrong key, that door won't open. You're searching for the right key for the lock. And so these compounds, they will get rid of cancer, the cancer cells that they need to get rid of. And for those that they need to increase um, estrogen for other benefits in the body, they do that. So it says here, we found that genistein and diastein and ERB, because there are two cells, beta cells, A and B, significantly inhibit cancer, ovarian cancer cells from migrating, invasion, prolific, proliferation, as well as induce cell cycle arrest. They capture them, they hold them. And so when you eat the fiber, when you hold onto them, they get rid of those bad estrogen that's floating around, around causing havoc. So they get rid of them. And of course, through help of the various different organs and body to get rid of that. So that's why it's so important that when you eat your fiber, when you eat these, you have the fiber. And then of course the fiber helps with your bowel movements in getting rid of the excess estrogen that's not supposed to be there in the first place. And that's why gut health is so, so important. But by eating your, um, and I can, I, I, I feel a question coming on where you might say, well, when I eat the beans or when I eat my legumes, I develop excess gas. We'll come on to that a little bit later. So the, the conclusion here is, is that genistein and diastein and EB, ERB decrease the ovarian cancer cells migration for them to, ex, for them to leave their lo, the, the lo, lo, locality and to spread other places. It just holds it there and then of course gets rid of it through stools, excess through stools and other means of getting rid of it out of the body. So it does a metastasize and spread to different parts of the body, which is what you don't want. So these two compounds here, they are crucial. And this is where the controversy and conversations and debates about whether they increase cancer or they don't increase cancer. I wanna make mention here of resistant starch. What do I mean by resistant starch? Legumes will increase your resistant starch in the digestive tract. So what is this resistant starch? Okay, so there are four types of them. Type one found in legumes bound with fibrous cell walls. So which means they're not easily digested. They're, they're starch, but they're resistant to digestion. So you eat them, but they're not digested in the digestive tract. What they do though, is that they travel and make their way to feed the, 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 the friendly bacteria in the colon. And that's where you want them to go. Type two, starchy food, like raw potatoes and like green bananas will give you resistant starch. Type four is a man-made, made in chemical. So what we, so in, in relation to this, this talk, we want type one, the legumes. They give us resistant starch because they help to lower our blood sugar levels, reduce our appetites, and of course, friendly bacteria. Now, we need to eat a wide variety of foods to increase our friendly bacteria in the body. Bacteria, as we know, they are more bacteria on the inside of us than the cells that make up our body. And so, when we feed them, they look after us. You know, as the father of medicine, or the father of medicine says, disease is the first place, I paraphrase, disease starts in the gut. Because when you're not digesting food properly, when it, good nutrients are not um, entered into the mouth and for it to be digested properly, we can develop illnesses. Estrogen imbalance is one of them. Because if the excess estrogen in the body is not, um, expelled via bowel movements, then you know that, let's get someone here, you know that will cause problem, estrogen imbalance. And when your body has a lot of excess estrogen, then it forms little pockets. 
So you notice you may have some lump on your arm or you may have lumps in your breast, lumpy breast sometimes as well too. The fibroid tissue is there to because the, the excess estrogen doesn't know where to go because the digestive system is not working properly where you can expel and excrete um, those excess estrogen. Improves insulin sensitivity as well. So resistant starch is what we need and we can get those from our legumes. Okay. So just to recap a little, is that look at some of the benefits of our legumes. High protein, the fiber is there. Source of micronutrients and macronutrients. High in antioxidants. And guess what? It's gluten-free. Now there is a craze now of having gluten-free products. And I know some of your grains and your flowers you'll be using will be heading towards some of them are gluten-free, some are not, but our bodies are not able to break down gluten and wheat as it once did years ago. And hence why we are, there's a push or there's a, a, a strong recommendation for including gluten-free products in your diet. And what better way to do so with your fruits, your grains, the seeds, the nuts, your legumes as well too. The, it's anti-diabetic and anti-cancer properties. I mentioned some of the properties earlier, but there are lots of studies that by including your legumes, then of course it reduces your risk of these cancer, including prostate cancer as well too. It's low in fat. So you don't have to be worried about um, saturated fats un and unsaturated fats because it's low in fats. It's low glycemic index, which means when you have your beans, you stay fuller for longer. So then it's not spiking your blood sugar levels because remember, each time you put something in your mouth, the insulin says, okay, pancreas says, okay, something's coming through. I need to get some insulin ready to break that food down. Help to, help to break that food down and to get it out of the bloodstream as quickly as possible. But when you have a low glycemic index food, then it means when you have your breakfast or you have your dinner in the afternoon and you have your lovely, um, whether it's a nut loaf, whether it is a bean stew or a bread, whatever you're doing on your recipes to make and use to use your legumes, including your soy, it keeps you fuller for longer. So you're not then picking, you're not then eating between meals, which will then also uh, um, di disrupt your digestive juices and um, alter your digest the digestive process. Now, they is still um, crazed, as I mentioned before, about using soy products, whether it's soy milk, soy butter, and I understand that a lot of the soya, it goes through a process in order to get to the milk and the butter and the biscuits and whatever else you, you, you're using. So the encouragement is more to lean towards a natural part of the soya bean as much as possible. Now, I like using ignami beans because that's a soya bean. And of course, you throw this into your salads or you just eat them as part of your protein or, you know, the very ways you can. But the soya milk, make its own soya milk, and you know, tofu. Now, tofu, there is um, there, 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 there is concerns whether it's GMO or it, it's a natural, where do I purchase it from? You know, which are all questions that you probably will be thinking about now. But wherever you are living in the world, ensure that the source that you the, the product that you purchase, soya that is from a good quality um, manufacturer that's manufacturing it. And I know that in this course, you will be encouraged, or I think it, it, it is actually part of the curriculum where you actually make your own tofu. So being on the, the, the being here, Natural Remedies Kitchen training course, it's a plethora of different things you can, you can make. And it's just to hone in more on, and to reemphasize the plethora of benefits of having legumes into your diet. And that hopefully 
that by now you're probably thinking, well, I need to do a little bit more research. I want to dig a little bit more deep, deeper. So when I'm explaining it or when I'm talking to a family member that I, that I have, and I can, I'm sure that what I'm doing, it's, it's, it's sound, okay? So eat different color beans. And you can see from this picture, there's loads of different beans. And eating beans every day, it's okay. You've seen the ver diverse benefits of eating your beans and the colors that comes across, because all these colors, they do have their own compounds and benefits from eating um, your, your beans. I'll show you a picture next, next of if you're going to incorporate black bean, the nutrients black bean will give to you would be slightly different to your monk bean or your navy bean. And that's why you encourage to eat the different colors incorporate all of them into your, 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 your diet. It's called, the, it's, it's referred to eating your colors, it's referred to as the cancer prevention food because it's so versatile what you do, but the nutrients is beyond, whereas the nutrients that you receive just um, nourishes the body on various different levels. No one wants to get the call or feel the lump or not feeling well and go to the doctors and the doctors are confirming that, oh, by the way, you have the C word. You're diagnosed with cancer. But by eating, the studies have shown that by eating um, beans on a daily basis, that helps to reduce your risk of cancer. And as I said before, whether it's be breast cancer, prostate cancer, and other illnesses in the body as well too. For the post-menopausal ladies, the peri-menopausal ladies, you want to incorporate those into your diet. So just quickly looking at um, some of the nutrients that you get and how they will vary. So let's quickly look at maybe um, black bean and the black eye peas. So your calcium level will be more in the black eye peas. And the protein, you get a little bit more than the black eye peas or the baby lima beans by eating your black eye peas. So the encouragement is to incorporate a lot more. I know when in some time when I come into the class, when um, Sister Devine will say, uh, or, or, or we will say, what beans do we have today? Who is cooking what? What do you have in your cupboard? Go to your cupboard, see what's there. You know, sometimes in the cupboard, you always have some, a, a, a packet of dry beans somewhere put aside. Or sometimes it's one of the tin, something to reach quickly for if you've got extra um, relatives or friends around for dinner. You know, after today, stock up on your legumes, stock up on your beans, because there are so much nutrients to get from them. So are you getting enough? Perhaps after you finish your course, you said yes. The answer will be yes, I'm getting enough because I've incorporated more now into my diet. So kidney beans, for, for example, a case is um, cholesterol-free, fat-free, high fiber. Black beans is sodium-free. Just to have a quick look at the calories that you receive in one, in a half cup of the kidney bean is less than the black bean. The um, fiber in black bean is, will be, um, so the, yes, the fiber is more than what off in the kidney bean. Now I like using black, beans because I find it so versatile as well too. I make all sorts with it. I do make um, a lot. I like those patties or burgers, if you like, with terminology for it. My parents love it as well too. And it's so easy. You do, and I'm sure you have lots more recipes to, to, to um, have, but I just cook it and make sure it's all mushy. Then I just add some oats to it or a binder, so flax seeds, whatever it is, and just put it in the oven. Lovely, with some, you know, nutritive yeast maybe, or a little bit of um, hemolin or Celtic salt. Just, you know, some people don't need that, but it's just so tasty. So I'm encouraging you to get them into your diet, get them all in. These are some peaches here. Um, to encourage you, and I, I probably don't need to encourage you because I know you'll be doing your best. Whether it's going to be rice and peas, peas and rice, uh, refried beans, whether it's going to be stew peas, moi moi, 
um, Nigerians, a special spe speciality there. Bean patties, it could be red, red stew from Ghana, you know, a lingot doit nord dish from France, bean loaf, bean ice cream. I think I missed that session on ice cream. I was like, yes, but I need to watch the replay for that one. I think I missed the ice cream. Um, black eyed peas, which is a black eyed pea soup, which is from Liberia. But this is just encouraging you to incorporate your beans in, but not just, just your beans, but your soya as well too. And not to be scared so much. There's a taboo on that. A lot of people don't like talking about soya because they run a mile away from it. So in closing, make room for your legumes to ensure your body is filled with vital nutrients. Explore and try new dishes with different legumes each week. Every, you know, if you're from a part of the world where um, you're not accustomed to a particular dish that is more prevalent in other, in other parts, get the recipe, go out looking for that bean and incorporate it into, make a dish. Get the recipe and make a dish because I'll tell you something, the wide variety that we eat, we benefit our digestive tract. We build the bacteria that needs to be on the inside of us. We have bacteria on the outside of on our skin and on the inside, from the mouth all the way back to the back, to the anus. And we need those, um, those friendly bacteria, especially in the, in, in, the, in the digestive tract and also the colon, to get rid of bad um, and unfriendly Bacteria. So they need to be more friendly bacteria than bad bacteria. Okay. And one good way in, in, a, in addition to having a uh, taking up uh, probiotics, you get the prebiotics. So you get, you know, all these different foods and the fiber, the fiber that helps to um, encourage. And those um, bacteria which may have been dormant, they will come alive. You'll feel different in yourself. You'll feel more happier as well too. Better skin. The list is endless in terms of the benefits that you can have with your legumes. So enjoy and share with others and remember to apply the other keys to health to then experience the full benefit of including legumes into your diet. And as I said, I, I encourage you to um, do some research as well because it's the overwhelming research. The research has been done everywhere in the world about legumes and more especially though, it's about the soy and the soy products, whether those are beneficial or not to the body. I mean, um, Loma Linda University, they've done lots of research on that as well too, lots of studies to prove that even the young child, even, little, even a young teenager, the young child can benefit. And the earlier you start incorporating these into your diet, so when you come of age and older, then your nutrients are already there, the cells are already been um, fed, and the organs are there now to work better, so better health. All right, so I'm going to stop here to see if there's any questions for me. Let me just stop um, sharing. Okay, I can actually um, see a question. Oh. oh, there's a question here. I'll just quickly pick this one up. What's the difference between the prebiotics and the probiotics? So prebiotics is where you're feeding the bacteria that are there, the prebiotics, okay? Now foods may be thinking, well, do I take a supplement or do I not take a supplement? There are people who actually take supplements. And that's one supplement that I would encourage clients and to, to incorporate in, into their um, daily life because you are then creating more bacteria, the friendly bacteria you, you, that we so need. Is not so much now about the probiotics, but the pre. Oh, can you hear me? I think I'm. Pro yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. 
So their food, sounds like your potatoes, your leeks, your onions, your garlics, those are the prebiotics and they help to feed the bacteria that are there in, in, in the gut. They're crucial. So Sonia, are you frozen? So you're putting more, so that's the probiotics. You're putting bacteria back into the gut, which are not there. So that's the difference. Between. Sorry, Sonia, you, you went out just now. So I went out? Yeah, uh -oh. you were frozen for a little bit, it seemed like. Yeah. Okay, so let me start again. Okay. Yes. So the pre, and uh, the difference between the pre and the pro. So I think it's not this. Let me take my my um, thing off just to. Uh, this might help. Uh, okay, I'm hoping that will help. Just remove my. My, my, my screen, my face, my camera. Right, so the prebiotics is you're feeding the bacteria that are already in the gut and they like fiber, they thrive on fiber. And hence why things like your, your onions, your garlic, and all those fiber, those leeks, food as well, potatoes, asparagus, they feed the bacteria in the gut. But the probiotics, you need to put back the bacteria that are missing, the different strains of bacteria that you may not have in your gut at the time. So hence you take, you're encouraged to take probiotic products to put in back bacteria that are not there, but the prebiotics is feeding the bacteria that are already in the gut. Is that onks? On, onks? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's me. Go ahead with your question. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Hello, um, Sonia. Uh, if you could just recap on the probiotics for me, please, because um, I was sort of busy writing down the advantages of the pre prebiotics. But Mr. <laughs> That's a good one to write down. <laughs> yeah. I see it in the exam. Okay. <laughs> yes. So the probiotics it refers to more like the bacteria that we have in our system. So we want to have a plethora, we want to have as many different because the, the, the bacteria on the inside is more than what makes up the cells in our body. So we got bacteria, we got viruses, we got fungi, we got all of that going on on the inside, but they are there for specific reasons to keep us healthy. Because once the gut doesn't have a lot of bacteria in it, then we succumb to illnesses. And there's other studies that will confirm, confirm that. So the probiotics, we want to add the beneficial bacteria back into the system. Um, there's a whole list of um, those bacteria, and let me just try and read some out for, for you. Because I know you just because you're taking you're taking notes. We I mean we have Lactobacilli, we have um, Acamensia. No, Acamensia is one um, bacteria that. If you have excess weight, I say excess blessing, you, you, you know, you want to lose the weight, but somehow you're not able to lose this weight. You're trying to your best. You're trying to drink water. You're sleeping. You're trying to exercise. But if that bacteria is not present in your gut, you'll have more difficulty in losing the weight. It's called acamensia. And one of the foods that um, acamensia love is pomegranate loves pomegranate. It feeds a particular bacteria. So when you, you're here and eat a wide range of fruits and vegetables, fruits and vegetables, it's because by doing so, we are feeding the bacteria on the inside of us. And so some of them may be dormant, but once they start getting the food, 
they then come alive and they have their, um, the, the role to play in breaking down foods, in creating um, new transmitters in our bodies for us to feel good. It, it's keeping us full, it's, it's working in terms of um, when we absorb our foods, how the food is then distributed to the next phase. These microbes, these um, materials are crucial. So that's where you actually put back into the body. But the pre is what you're gonna to eat to feed them. We need to feed our good bacteria and fiber is number one. Fiber is key. So when someone said, okay, I mean, the um, recommended daily allowance for the UK is for female to eat at least 25 grams of fiber a day and men up to 28. Now, I personally think that should be more because we need those microbes to get what they need. Don't give them um, sugars, um, processed foods, and I'm talking a group of people who may not even be eating that way anymore, crisps and biscuits and chocolates, they don't have the fiber that those microbes will need. So we need to incorporate the fruits, vegetables, grains, and of course, our legumes and that will feed these bacteria. Is that clear, Gloria? Yeah, thank you so much for that. One of the things that's running through my mind is, um, and I've got gr grown up children who's got children, is that we always tell them to eat such and such, it's good for you. But I think these things, if we start telling children why it's good for them, I just think it's, you know, we won't have so much problems when we are adults. Correct. So yeah, thank you for that. You're welcome. You know, as part of my role in what I do is doctor as teacher. So I do a lot of the teaching aspect because as you quite rightly said, you know, when people understand the benefits of something and the risk in doing something, then they will more adhere to, oh, now I know when I have a plate of beans, I just, oh, it's beans again. Why is mom giving me beans again? But of course, with the with coming to the natural medicine kitchen, there's various different ways you can incorporate those beans. So it's appetizing and it's pleasing to the eyes. But of course, if they understand the role and the benefits of those beans, you know, it, it, it keeps them fuller for longer, give them good skin in terms of the, the teenagers, in terms of balancing the hormones as well, getting rid of estrogen and have estrogen and progesterone balance together. That will get rid of the acne on the face that will, you know, get rid of the, 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 the bloating. Another, let me just quickly say, a lot of people say, oh, I don't like beans because it makes me um, gassy. One of the um, tip is when you're boiling the bean to not add, some of the beans not to add the salt to the pot. Some people add the salt to the pot. However, explain to the individual that when you eat the bean and you're gassy, it's because the microbes are not in the gut that will help to break down those beans. Once you start incorporating a little bean, a small amount every day in diet during the week, you will start building a stronger system in, to incorporate the beans. That will prevent all of that gas and fat lens that's going on. And of course, there's other things you can add to the pot to, that will help with breaking down. Because remember, the plant, their phytochemicals are there to protect them. But when we eat them and incorporate them, they, we need to break down the, the, the compounds so that the body can absorb much better. And that's why we have these um, gassy and sometimes um, you know, adverse effect to these lovely foods that we should be eating. And you know, sometimes people say, well, I'm allergic to this or I'm, I have allergic reaction to something. And usually when that happens, it's because the body doesn't have the right microbes. Remember I said earlier that there are over a hundred trillion microbes that lives on the inside of us. And they are the ones who are doing the work in order to break down our foods. And so when something comes in, it's a little bit foreign. Well, I think, okay, well, I don't know this food. So what is this? Or where is such and such and such to break down this food? Oh, they, they don't, no, they're not there. So as they're not there, it has an adverse reaction to the body. What, okay, next question is, why is that some people complain of acid after eating legumes? Now, it could be what they're pairing the legumes with to, and I would jump straight to the fact that 
nine out of 10 times, we don't have enough digestive enzymes that will break down these legumes and these beans and foods. And when we don't, then we have these, um, you repeat something into all the acid reflux, some acid reflux that comes up. You may go to bed, you may have a burning on the chest or something like that. And also sometimes how it's cooked. So sometimes we have, we cook with a lot of oil and not even the good oil we're cooking with as well. And that can also cause, because I know um, of a particular dish that the, the, the oil, the beans are more or less cooked into the stew. But sometimes if you don't have the digestive enzymes to break down the beans and that's that meal, then of course you'll have acid reflux of people. So well, okay, if I have acid reflux, that means I have too much acid, but that is wrong. You need the acid to break down the food. What's happening there is because there's not enough digestive enzymes because we need the, the hydrochloric acid to break down the food. We need the digestive enzymes now. So the beans is protein, of course. So we need or pepsin, pepsinogen that breaks down the protein. Now, if um, we don't have enough digestive enzyme going on in the body, then of course, that's why we'll have all these repeats and these burning and acid that's going on in the body. So um, digestive enzymes, as well as hydrochloric acid are key components for breaking down and getting the benefits from what we cook and from what we eat. Sonia? Yes. Thank you. How much servings of beans would you say we should have per day? I will, some of the studies will say um, two. I would go as far as saying three, if you can. Wow. But wow. A serving a day is good. Ensure you have a serving a day. Now the reason at is least. Not, at least, at least, yes, at least. Because, you know, I have clients who said, okay, they, their bowel movements are sluggish and all of that stuff. And I'm okay, when you look at the diet and you do the assessment, they don't have enough fiber. So yeah. we start off slow with the, with the, with the foods, so with the beans, the legumes, lentils, soft, slow. Then you build up because of course they'll, they'll have, they'll be, they'll experience gas and flatulence and too much of that. So we start off slow and then, um, ensure that you can in, in, incorporate your legumes into your diet on a daily, daily basis. Daily basis. Excellent. That's fantastic. Mute, mute, mute the children, please. Mute the children. We know it's holiday time, so you gotta have them around. <laughs> All right. There's a question that says, How much is a serving? Now, it's because I know the raw, when you have the raw, like a, a cup of raw um, bean, when you cook it, it reduce and sometimes whether the, it, the serving is coming from a can is this canned so whether it's chickpea monk bean whatever it is but 150 gram and that's, that's one cup so of course a child will be less because because of course legumes beans are protein and we should eat or protein in accordance to our body weight. Now that takes a lot of calculation into that, but some people just, they just eyeball in terms of, okay, my family such is this amount and this amount of beans I'm cooking, but I'm sure um, Sister Davina probably go deeper in terms of how much you need, but in, ter in, in terms of the protein aspect from the bean, from the, from the legume, and I'll make mention of the bean more so, then we need to eat according to our body size. All right, lovely. Right, so that's why you normally have your protein and you have some carbs going on there and you have your live foods or your vegetables because, you know, so you have your great, your carbs, could be the grains or um, to complement the beans on the plate and your vegetables as well. So they all play a part 
um, in terms of how your plate look and the nutrients that you receive from them. All right, fantastic. Any more questions for Sonia? Thank you, Sonia. Any more questions, Sonia? Hello. Yes, go yes. ahead. Okay, I have found that some people were, who, who complain of acid after eating legumes, when they eat sprouted beans, then the acid reduces. What could be the reason for that? Right, so the sprouted vegetables and a lot of people um, in, get, um, yeah. eat a lot of sprouted vegetables now, sprouted beans. Can you have a little bit more nutrients as well to from the sprouted ones? I'm not sure it's, yes. I do think that there's a lesson coming up where you can sprout your- Oh, okay. Yes, but yeah, there's a lot more yes. nutrients as well too in your um, sprouted, the sprouted um, beans. And it's something widespread, a lot of people. Um, okay. Yes, gravitating to that now. Oh. And it's, of course, it's oh, easy for the, for the body to, to digest as well too. Okay, that is that to digest. Yes, they get more okay. nutrients. And of course, it has a plethora of um, health benefits. It also improves heart health and of course, balancing um, cholesterol because of course, you know, it has this fiber content as well too. So it raises, it creates good, good cholesterol. So it helps the liver to create good cholesterol in the body. All right, fantastic. Um, to, in regard to your, uh, to your question, if the beans are soaked, if you have a problem with digesting beans, you may wanna consider soaking them for, let's say about 24 hours. Nice. You could even nice. soak them for longer. So you soak them, after eight hours, you can strain the water off, rinse it off and put fresh water, soak it some more. Mm -hmm. um, for another eight hours, again, drain the water off. So you can do that until you have about 24 to 48 hours of soaking. That will also help you in terms of digestion of the beans. For some people, when you cook it, after it's boiled up for like the first 30 seconds, I mean, sorry, 30 minutes of boiling, you also drain the water off and add back boiling water mm. to finish cooking it. But you sort of drain that first water off that helps to get rid of um, the sugars that causes um, bloating and um, that contribute to the poor digestion of the beans. Oftentimes as well, when people are having problems with digesting beans, if you just keep at it for about a week, you, your body will adjust and it will get over it and you will stop having the problems. Mm. Oftentimes as well, the person may need to talk to a nutritionist or a naturopath or someone in that respect because the problem is not necessarily the beans, it's the gut. Um, hi, can I say something? Um, I have found also with um, slow cooking the beans for just <laughs> over three hours actually helps with the digestion of the beans as well. So persons may want to try that. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Slow cooking and it's fine. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Sonia. I take it there are no more questions for you at this time. Mm -hmm. Just want to say, I really appreciate you coming on here to share um, these re um, this presentation with us with all of these um, new information. There was something in it that was new for me. Can't even remember the terminology now. I should have written it down, but I will hear starch? it again. Sorry, say that. Is that the resistance storage? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you. Beneficial. So where the you know, where where it's not digested in the and been absorbed elsewhere, it goes straight to the colon and it feeds those microbes in the gut. In in the, in One. the colon. Wonderful. Yeah. So it acts as your prebiotics. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. So there you go. Save yourself some money and just buy <laughs> some beans. It's so much cheaper and tastier. <laughs> <laughs> right? That your food indeed be your medicine. 
All right. Now, um, <laughs> just to say that there will be quite a few questions from the Beans presentation um, that will appear on the final test. It's a little test, it's nothing to fear, but I would advise you to go over this lecture, today's lecture in your free time and do make some notes. The, the information on this lecture is very important. And the reason why we emphasize this so much is because vegans often find themselves running into problems by getting the very same diseases that the world is getting because of very poor eating, beans are not in their diets or it's not in, in enough quantity. And that is why we so emphasize having your beans in your diet every day. And one aspect of this course is we truly try to focus on teaching you various ways of getting the beans in because we're also humans and we do know and understand that people can run out of steam. Just imagine trying to get three servings of beans in your diet for the day. After after two days, you have run out of ideas, isn't it? So one day, okay, every day you have bean milk. Um, and how, you're going to have curry chickpeas, okay? Everybody knows that. And then you're going to have some other stew peas. And that's it. What else do you do with the beans, you know? Okay, so you have baked beans loaded with sugar. Um, and Sunday, well, often at the weekend, you give the family baked beans. So that's it. You sort of run out of ideas after a few meals how to incorporate this bean in your diet without having your family literally stoning you with the beans. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because they're bored of you feeding them stew peas every day. So with this course, we try to teach you various different ways how to incorporate the beans in your diet not just various ways, but interesting ways as well, unusual ways, exciting ways, delicious ways, as well as nutritious ways. So with that said, I would like to see all the screens open and I'd love to see everyone in their kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, beans is classified as a fountain of youth, so get them in. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's now time for the interesting part of the course. So, today, I don't know, Myrtle, do you want it to go first with your nut milk? Most definitely. <laughs> All right, so Myrtle is ready in her kitchen there. Um, let's Let's pin Myrtle to the screen and spotlight her so everyone can see her because I can't yeah, see her. And look, Myrtle has a little student in her class there. Let's, re let's remove Sonia. So we are now present in Myrtle's kitchen. Can everyone see Myrtle on their screen? Yes. Wonderful. Now, if there's any no. person, what? Okay, so put, Myrtle, put your, your device on speaker's view. And I'm gonna go to what they call spotlight. So let me spotlight Myrtle for everyone. Yep, everyone should be seeing Myrtle now. And if you're not seeing her, please go on speaker's view. So Myrtle is in the kitchen with her granddaughter. Yay. <laughs> so this so is an exciting time. I want everyone in their <laughs> kitchens. <laughs> so I have two students over here as well, Myrtle, who is following along. Okay. Yes. Our nut <laughs> milk is going to be quick and easy. For those of you, um, you should have already had your cashews soaked and your almonds soaked as well for the nut milk. Now, the almonds start off like this. And after we soak them overnight, we are going to get them where we can remove the shell or the, the skin from off of them. And this is the part that we're gonna to use to make our milk, okay? Just the white part of the almond. Now it won't kill you if you didn't <laughs> take the skin off, but your milk may not look um, 
as white as you would like it. And do not throw away, do not throw away your skins. You can put this in your, your um, meat rolls, your meatballs, your burgers, in your rice, in any dish that you're making. Just grind it up and put it in your food. Speaking about fiber, lots of fiber in that. So don't throw that away, all right? So how many people are making the nut milk? I think I'm gonna go ahead with my almond milk first. Um, I forgot to soak the almonds overnight. <laughs> okay. So for those of you who didn't remember to soak your cashews overnight, you can actually put them on a pot, put them in a pot on the stove now with some water and boil for 10 minutes, okay? So you can do that and you'll be able to make your cashew milk. With the almond milk, you can do the same thing, but it's, it's a little um, time consuming to remove the skin sometimes. So if you wanna do it with the skin on, you can go right on ahead and follow suit. But if not, you can just go ahead and soak them and do your milk later. Okay, so we're gonna start with the almond milk. And we're going to put, we mean in Amira, is going to put two and a half cups. Remember, we, we started off with one cup of dried almonds and we soaked it. And this is the amount doubled in, in, uh, in quantity, the two cups, almost two cups of almonds we have here. All right? So you're going to put in the two cups of almonds first. Go ahead and pour them in. Pour it in your blender. Okay. And with that, we're going to put two and a half cups of water. We have the cups of water measured out here, so just grab one. Oh. One cup. All the way up. Okay. Two cups. Two and a half cups. Now, if you want your, thin, your, your milk to be a little thinner, you can put in three cups. Okay, but for today, we're going to put in two and a half cups of water. And now we are going to blend. I'm going to take off the Okay, so you blend that until it's finely ground. And then we are going to put it into a, um, a nut bag. For the, for the milk, it may not have much left back in there if you have a powerful blender, but we're gonna put it through the nut bag. This is a very fine one. And take out whatever sediments that's left in the Amira is gonna pour it out. Come down, come down closer, come down closer. I'm gonna wash my hands here a second. Thank 
I'm going to squeeze. Okay, so we're going to squeeze the rest of it through the nut bag. Now we do not waste anything from the nut, okay? So whatever is remaining here in the nut in a nut bag, we are also going to put that in the freezer until we are ready to make loaf, burger, oatmeal, cereal, anything. We're gonna put it in there, right? You're going to squeeze until there's no more liquid. All right. I think that's about it. What do you say, Amari? You think that's it? You think we have some more to squeeze? Okay, there we go. You see what's left in there? It's powdery. Okay, Amara just said it's powdery. So this is what we have. We have pulp left back. Okay, so there you have it. Almost totally dry. This will be good to put in your ice cream, Davina. Okay. The okara. Well, this is this is not soybean, so. But oh, we, can, we can put that one in in the um in your ice cream or whatever mm -hmm. you're gonna make. And this is our end product. Now to this you can add. A little bit of sweetener, you can leave it as is. You can put a pinch of salt. You can put um, even like maybe a, a, a date or some date sugar, but it's good to go just as is. Um, when you're making your cereal, when you to make your um, cheese, to make your whatever dish, whatever you would use milk for, you can now use this in place of. Okay, so this is your plant-based version of milk. I put nothing in mine. I just leave it as it is, okay? I use it, um, that way I can use it on whatever I would like, all right? I think we're gonna do some dessert since I have a little person here. Um, I seem like she's always hungry. <laughs> I will use that to make something for her later. Okay. So the next milk that we're going to, how far along are we? How many people are uh, uh, in the kitchen today? I asked that question before, but I didn't get so, an answer. Davina's kitchen is in use today. Okay, so they're, Davina's they're kitchen. Still on stripping, they're still unstripping the nuts. Okay, yeah. It's gonna be tedious with the almonds. There's no fast way to get, her, to get those almonds <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> and it will change the color of the milk you will make the milk brown not totally brown um just make sure you wash them pretty good because the first set of water that comes off of the um the milk when i mean the almonds when they soak is pretty brown yes. so wash that pretty good make sure all that sediments off and then you can probably um use it if it. you have if you have to if you uh, have to yeah all right question how about P 
peanut milk, um, if I have a peanut in the skin, I would do it the same way, like the almond, get the skin off. Correct. All right. One more question. If I have roasted almonds, can I soak them and use them to make milk as well? Would that taste well, nicer? Well, I had a teacher that said you could roast them first. So I would say yes, but I've never tried them that way. Okay. All right. Lovely. Remember heating, depending on how much you roasted it, you have destroyed some of the nutrients as well. That's my well, yes, logical that's thinking. Well, yeah, 100% true. So but in terms um, of flavor. Yeah. They do have the taste buds, but nutritionally, yes, you're losing a bit. Especially you're going to use it in the case of milk, in the place of milk. Mm -hmm. You may want to have the nutrients. <laughs> okay. And we're talking about getting away from a lot of liquids. So basically, I'm thinking using the milk in some sort of recipe that you're making. Um, I don't think we're going to be drinking glasses and glasses of, of milk per day. Okay. So in that case, I think you'll be fine. There's another question. Yes, please. Uh -huh. Can Go you ahead. hear me? Right. Um, is there a reason for like, okay, the milk is raw that we have to boil it since I did not soak it because I've made, um, I've made cashew milk before, but I did not, I neither soaked it nor did I, um, boil it i just blended it with the water and carried on even with the almonds as well what i did i when i make almond milk i usually boil the water and pour it over the almonds for about 20 minutes and then the skin comes off and then i do carry on with the process is there a reason why you boil it or is it just your way of that's your how you've learned it okay that's how i was taught it that's one but also it helps to soften the um nut so you get more out of the nut when you blend it. I, I find more pulp um, remains when the nut is not soaked. Okay, so for example, you saw when I, um, I showed you the nut unsoaked is one cup and after soaking it, it became two cups. So oh, if you're okay. gonna blend it just like that, know that it's not going to be as- Rich. Um, okay. It's going to be, you're not going to get as much um, nutrients out, or a lot of it is going to be left back in the pot that's remaining. Right, got you. Understand. Thank so you. So you get a smoother, creamier milk when it is soaked. Correct, yep. because it's softer, because it's softer and, the, and it's more waterlogged. So therefore, it can blend and get more nutrients out. All right. right. Uh, what, what more? It was just given. Given you is a quick soak method. If you were not able, if you did not soak it, that's a quick method to get it from soaked overnight. Yes. yes. So like right. what I was saying before, if you didn't and you want to do the milk, that's why I was suggesting that you do that. Yeah, I understand that. Um, one more question. Did you say two and a half cups of water in the blender? Correct. It could be two and a half to three. If you want a thicker milk, it'll be two and a half cups. If you like a thin milk, then it's gonna be three cups. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And make sure it's good water. <laughs> so it's three cups to three cups of water to two cups of almonds, correct? And how can I get that thing for cream? Sorry, I was asking, is it one cup of almond milk and you one cup of almonds and two cups of water? No, no, no. One cup of soaked almonds is going to yield you to two cups of almonds to two and a half cups of water. Okay. Two and a half to three cups, depending on how thick you would like your milk. Okay. This milk is nice and, and creamy and thick. Okay. If you want it thinner than that, then you'll put three cups. Okay. And if I wanted a real cream, like a single type cream version, then you will put like one cup of water. Okay. Um, Unc's hand is up. Hello. Um, go ahead with your question. Okay. Um, yes, I have a question. My question is on the white bean. 
I have a what? question about the white beans. The small white beans. No, but beans. we're not we're not at the How white beans as yet. The white beans. Yeah, we're not. Okay, so right yet. now we're doing nut milks. We're doing almond and cashew. So oh, you can okay. hold off on that question until we get, get there. Them. Okay. Okay, so there was a question in the All chat. right, thank you. You're, You're welcome. welcome. How long does the milk stay before it goes bad? <laughs> Don't make too much. If you know you're not gonna use it up within a couple of days, then don't make it. I would I would think maybe four to five days max in the fridge. Okay, once you freeze it, the milk really doesn't come back out that smooth when you defrost it. So try not to make too much, make as much as you need. So if all you need is a half, because as you're looking here, you'll see this made you, uh, a half a quart, a little more than half a quart of milk. So if you're not going to be using up that much milk in the next couple of days, then you do um, half of the amount. Okay. So you can use so, this to make your macaroni and cheese. You can use it to make your mashed potato. You can use it in your cereal. Okay, so just do as much as you need. Oh, that milk right over there is looking, that's Lisa, that looks lovely. Oh, that's a lot of milk, Lisa. How much is that? Did you do the three cups of water? I'm not hearing you, Lisa. Sorry, that didn't hear your question, sorry. I said that looked like a lot of milk. How much water did you use? I The two and a half cups. The two and a half, oh, okay, you probably have a, a um, slender blaze. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, no problem, okay. Yeah. Make sure you enjoy that in the next couple of days. Don't let it waste. I definitely will. <laughs> okay. okay, all right, okay. are we gonna go to the... So we're gonna go on now to our cashew milk. We're gonna cover this one down, put it aside. Taste your milk. Um, just to add, if you freeze the milk, then afterwards it's best to use it. The, the um, structure is gonna break a bit, but the milk will still be good. Just that it won't be suitable for certain recipes. You could use it in cooking and it will be fine. So you always have the option of freezing your milk, just, but just remember that in cooking recipes, it's probably um, makes sense, but other recipes, um, it may not be as suitable. Definitely it won't be suitable for just drinking straight. It won't look right. All right, so it's time for the cashew milk now. Yes, we're on to the cashew milk. And here is our... Let's see, did I miss it? How long does it go? Okay, make sure I didn't miss any questions before we go on. And here we have our cup of cashew. <laughs> <laughs> now you lose some of your profits when you have little helpers, okay? All right. And to that, we're going to add, originally I was going to do the same two and a half cups, but I am going to reduce it to just one cup, seeing as how we are going to be making um, some more yogurt later. I'm going to use this cashew milk to do so. So I'm going to just add one cup of water. So Myrtle, you would recommend everyone at this time just to save on some ingredients to just make it really thick to go for the yogurt later on? Yogurt is not until Thursday. 
Uh, I'm just making some desserts for her later. So that's why I'm just doing the one cup. So if you want to save it till Thursday, you can do that. Or um, if you're going to drink it, then you go ahead and put the two and a half cups in. Okay? But I'm going to show you how the thickness, the difference in the thickness of the milk with just one cup of water. Any questions before I start blending? That, that's one cup of water to one cup cashews, right? Yes. Correct. So, Christian, you're going to use a measuring cup and measure one cup of that salt cashew, right? So, always slightly different. You guys see how thick that is? Oh. Yeah. Are you seeing how thick that milk is? Anybody home? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> yes, yes, we're home. We're looking, we're looking. <laughs> okay, so this, this is very thick. Um, I'm not even going to strain that. Now, by the way, if you do not have a nut bag and you have a cheesecloth, you can um, put the cheesecloth inside of a big strainer and then pour the milk, the nut, the nut milk in there. 
and let it pass through the, um, the cheesecloth so it can collect some of the pulp that's remaining. Okay, with a cheesecloth, I find though that you have to wrap it several times, at least three to four times minimum in order to um, catch the bulk of the, the pulp, all right? But work with whatever you have, right? So if you have a strainer, then you put the cheesecloth inside the strainer and then um, let it pass through the sieve, through the, through the cheesecloth, through the sieve, and into your receptacle in the bottom, all right? So now Thursday, when you guys come, whoever here, and you're gonna be learning about yogurt, this is one of the steps that you're going to be doing for your yoga. It'll be one cup of cashews to one cup of water, okay? So Amara and I are gonna have some fun later on, and I'm gonna save this for then. So we're going to um, save this and do our recipe later. And remember for your pulp from your almonds, you use this to make um, energy balls, um, meat balls, your grain loaf. You can put some of this in as well. All right, burgers, sausages, any of those items, you can put your, the remaining of your nut in. Do not waste it. Do not put it in the trash. Stick it in the freezer if you're not ready to use it today because you can put it in something else for another day. Now, are there any questions for me? Oh, Amira. Because Amira can tell you the cashew taste. Go look at her over there. I'm trying to tell her no. <laughs> okay. All right. So there you go our cashew, cashew milk, our thick cashew milk, and our almond milk. So we have almond milk ready to go with cereal. All right. Are there any questions? If not, I'm gonna turn. Okay. As you would like, correct? That looks, that looks good for cashew milk, correct. So you put the two and a half cups of water, um, Davina's crew. No, one cup. Davina's crew, did you one, to one cup? cup? Yeah, one cup, one cup to okay. one cup. So one cup of soaked cashew. Uh -uh. We're trying to conserve because we know there's quite a few on day. <laughs> okay, so my, my question to you is, did you soak a cup of cashews and then the yes. results you put in the blender? Or did you yes. measure a cup after it was soaked? No, yeah, after soaked. We, we, we soaked maybe one pound of cashew and then we okay. just took one cup of soaked cashew with okay. one cup of water All right. to get so, the consistency. Okay, so let me explain now. One cup of cashews that are already soaked is not going to be the same as one cup of cashew that you soak. When you soak it, it's gonna yield almost twice as much, okay? So that's why I was wondering why your milk was thinner than mine, but that's fine. That's fine. But this Davina. is a very that's fine. thick milk. This is it's a very thick, but, milk. Okay, but it's, um, it's way thinner than how I have mine for the yogurt. Mine is very thick. Oh, for the yogurt, yes, yes. Yes, we still yes. Have so you can add some more water to yours. You we can add have, another. We still have this for the yogurt Thursday, we'll. Okay, yeah, you, can add another cup. you can add another cup of water to that milk you have there and stretch it some. To make it milk, this is like cream at the moment. Like right, really to, make it into, to make it into milk, correct. And mm -hmm. um, did I see Michelle? Michelle, did I lose you? Was it Michelle? Okay. Let's see your product, Michelle. Looks good. Um, how much water did you use? I'm, I'm not going to be able to hear you because you're muted. Okay. I used about two and a half cups to one cup of cashew. Okay. Did you taste it? How, is, how did it taste? It tastes taste really it. good. It tastes good. I would like a little bit of sweetener in it, but it's good because I want to drink it by itself. So I have okay. to acquire that taste. <laughs> All right. Now, if you, nice. you, know, you know, some people have children who um, have the, the processed um cereal when you put this in just like that without sweetening it 
yeah it actually gives it a real um good end product they won't even know that it's unsweetened okay, okay. now lng white said meet the people where they are so somebody wondering what am, why am i talking about um processed <laughs> cereal some people are still there so we're going to help them out so this milk with that processed um cereal is better than the other milk with the processed cereal you guys got me okay so now lisa on to you All right this is the cashew milk i use the two and a half cups um to the one cup of cashew Okay, you said two. You hearing me? Repeat that again, um, Lisa. The two and a half cups of water to one okay. cup of cashew. Okay. Yeah, did I you taste it? Same one from before. I did not use the almonds yet. Okay. How did it yeah. taste? Did you taste it? Does it? Did it yet? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, at my meal time, I will taste it. So I'll let you guys know on the WhatsApp. <laughs> Okay, now remember you can add a little bit of agave if you'd like, or a date, or um, a pinch of salt if you, you know yeah. you prefer. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank Very you good. So Thank you guys for cooking along with me today. I do appreciate you. Uh, is there anyone else before I turn it back over to Davina? I'm only seeing. Okay, but I think I've covered everyone. Well, thank you guys. Thanks, Davina. Back over to you. Just in case you're speaking, Davina, we can't hear you. Sorry. Yes. Thank you, Myrtle. You're welcome. Right. Now we are going to do a bean meal. Let me know who has soya beans and who has white navy beans. Let me um, take Myrtle off the screen. So I can see everyone else. Amira. All right. Who, you has, my camera, like... who has white navy beans? Raise your hand if you have white navy beans. Okay, all right, so that's no one. Raise your hand if you have soya beans. This is cooking class. What beans have you got, Eugenia? Okay, as you have, you didn't get a chance to get the beans. I have chicken, Eugenia. I didn't get the white. Beans. Okay. All right, lovely chickpeas is fine. All right. Um, let's see, Suzanne, what beans have you got? Katie, what beans have you got? Or Kitty? I guess I can see Bayesian beauty waiting patiently. <laughs> All right. All right, no, they have to be soaked. We can't make the bean milk without soaked bean. All right, what I'm gonna, you've got your chickpeas soaked, Michelle? Um, I'm using the canned ones today. Okay, I don't know if the canned beans being used for milk. I mean, I've seen people use the canned white beans, but I have never done it, so okay. yeah, and I've never seen anyone actually done it, so I, I don't know how the results will be. All right, what I'm going to do at this time, if nobody has their beans, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn over to Bayesian Beauty and let her do um, the, the, the creams, let her do the creams with you. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna voice note the procedure for the milks in the, group, in the group so you can do them as homework. So you can get your beans and soak them and, um, and do them as homework. So now Bayesian Beauty, Harriet, I will now put you on spotlight. Hi. Can you hear me? 
We can hear you. We can hear you. I, I'm still. Is, is Beijing Beauty on your screen, everyone? Have you, are you seeing Beijing Beauty only? Yes, left. Okay, all right. You can see it. Just her, right? Or are you still seeing me from others? Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Davina, thank you very much for um, inviting me to take part. Um, I feel an honor to do this. Um, She's asked me, Davina's asked me to say something about myself. I, I'm just me. Who you see on the screen is who you see, and that's me. Um, cooking is my hobby. Um, I have been a vegetarian for the better part of 30 years. Um, um, it's only um, in the last two years, two and a half years, that I decided and that was not my choice, it was my son's choice, um, that he wanted to go back to being a vegetarian, but he also wanted to be a vegan. And so I thought, Lord have mercy, I really am not um, that good at that. Um, my daughter reminded me, however, that a lot of the dishes that I have cooked or I was cooking were pretty much vegan. So when this course came along, I thought, let's try it and see what I can add to my um, list. And I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the, um, the four weeks that I spent doing it. My son was, I, I can't say ecstatic, but he was really pleased. He's loved all the dishes that I have done. And yes, I have just continued. And Davina says that I've become an entrepreneur. Not really. I just happened to have a craft uh, um, I make cards as well, so my craft come. Um... And then also, is it just my side, please? Could somebody? Sorry, I'm not hearing. I don't know if it's on my end. Oh, can anyone, everyone else, hearing me? Davina, you I'm hearing? hearing you loud yes, and clear. I so I think you. it may be your device, uh, the person. Okay. Yeah. I, I hear you. Okay. Thank you. I make cards and my cards, uh, I label them um, eye clips. And so when I finished the cooking and I was, um, I thought, let me just experiment and put my label on. And I got so many good comments and people wanting to buy the product that um, that's where I'm heading to actually making. And it was, sort of the, um, not, um, it was sugarless jams and spreads that I started off with. And so, yes, I'm diversifying. Anyway, this afternoon, I'm going to show you how to do um, onion cream, onion and cashew cream, and onion and cashew double cream. Now I have here, can you see? Can everyone see? Please speak to me, somebody. Yes, I can see. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we can yes, see. We can see. <laughs> yes, we're here. Thank yes. you, Is that you, Jeannie? Yes, sorry, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. This one, I can't get my camera. Uh -huh. Let's see, is that better? Can you see it there? Here I've got the onion cream and this is just the thickness of the onion cream. Um, when I gave this to some, to my neighbors actually to sample, it was like, I can't taste the onion. I was waiting for an explosion, but it's a very subtle onion taste. They liked it. This is the onion and cashew cream. And I'm going to show you how to do the um, double cream, but I went a little bit further and I made the sweet cream, which is this one, which I just um, omitted the oil and added some um, vanilla ex extract and agave, All right? so. Let me put these out of the way. 
and then we can get on with doing the others. Okay, to do our onion cream, I'm going to use my Nutribullet. Um, it's a bit more difficult, especially when you're adding the oil, but it can be done. So into my um, bullet, I'm going to add my onion, which I've already seen. Is anyone cooking along with me? No one cooking along? Yeah. Yes, yes, we are cooking over here. So we're okay. just cleaning our onions. No, oh, you haven't steamed them yet. No, they're not steamed as yet. I don't think anybody's as steamed as yet. I didn't tell them. Okay. So it's a quick steam, um, 15 minutes. Well, or till this, um, I did it till I got a skewer through it and it was soft. Right, tell me when someone has put their onions onto um, steam. How many onions? Three onions. I've used uh, quite a large one and a small one, which gave me the equivalent. I'm just going to cut it in half so that it can fit in my blender better. If it's still got a bit of a crunch, it doesn't matter. Right, into that, I'm going to put um, a half of a lemon because my lemon was quite large. So I'm only going to put half of the juice. About an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. I've used a mixture of Himalayan and sea salt. One cup of oil. Oh, done the wrong. The oil is supposed to be the last thing you add. Sorry. And your nuts. I'm going to put half of my nuts in because it's going to um, overload my blender otherwise. <clears throat> Which nuts are you using? I'm using a Nutribullet. No, which nuts? I'm using cashew nuts, which I've soaked overnight. And it was one cup of cashew nut. Right. Um, can I backtrack a minute, please? Instead of doing the onion cream, I've um, gone ahead and skipped to the onion cashew cream. Okay, so we're doing the onion cashew cream now. We'll go back to the onion nuts, the, on, um, the onion cream in a minute. Right, it's going to be very noisy, so I'm going to go on mute for a few seconds. Can we use the cashew cream that cashew cream that we just made? You're on mute, Bajan. Sorry, the question was, can they use the cashew nut cream that they have just made? Yeah. Okay, there you are. 
let's we can't see yours. Let's see how thick it should be. Let me see if we could use ours. And what? what? For, for our cashew cream, we just want to know if we can. Some people that we just made a thick cashew just now. Yeah. Um, uh, could we I'll use it? Yeah. I think I so. Let's see what how thick yours is. Oh no, we want with a spoon, please. Could I oh, okay? And that's just the cashew cream or that's the onion cashew cream. You're on mute. The onion cashew. I because I put the cashews in before I um instead of not um I went ahead okay. of my. Can I okay, ask, all right. Can I ask a question, please? Because okay. I, I I can't see the ingredient. How much um, oil did you put in, and what oil was it? I used I used um, olive oil, and it's supposed to be a cup of olive oil. Okay, thank you. I know that we've jumped ahead to do the onion cashew cream and you said to steam, you said to steam three onions for the onion cashew cream. So when we're doing the onion cream, do we need another three onions to be steamed as well? Okay. Okay, um, could we know how much exactly how much onion so that we can put all together one time so that would that be six onions all together six onions all together three for each okay thank you Right, I'm going back on mute so I can blend a bit more. If you've got the other type of blender where you have a, um, a pouring hole at the top, it's better because then you can pour your oil in slowly and um, let it mix in really well. But um, I don't have one of those. And this way, it's all right to do it, but it's a little bit more um, labor intensive. As you can see, that's the consistency of my thick um, cashew onion cream. Has anyone got there yet to that stage? No, we're not there yet. Okay, and you can taste it at this stage. If it needs more salt, you can add it, but it should, um, for me, it's fine. For others, it, they may need a tad more salt. Right, I'll give folks a chance to catch up while I um, prepare for the next session, the next bit. Okay, um, question. Could you just repeat all the ingredients for that sauce, please? Okay. For the cashew nut and onion cream, you need one cup of cashews soaked overnight, or you can cut, um, do it for the 30 minutes uh, boil time. 
one lemon juice, depending on the size. If it's a big one, half a lemon will be adequate. If it's a small one, a, a whole one is fine. And you need an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, um, Himalayan or sea salt. And one cup of olive oil. And this, honestly, is lovely in, um, with pasta. Just boil up your pasta with in some salted water. Pour this, mix it into this, into it when it's finished cooking with a salad and Bob's your uncle, as they would say. I don't know if Davina is still, um, um, what's the word I should I use? Yeah, we're still steaming our onion. Okay, no, I'm, I'm trying to use a word that is going to be reflective of, um, when I did the course, Davina was very, very hot on presentation. Okay? I'm and still, I'm still <laughs> even worse now. <laughs> Right. So, ladies, gentlemen, make sure that you present this nice. What I um, wanted to have done this afternoon was probably have um, um, sauteed some onions in some water and let them brown a little bit or caramelize and put on the top, but I didn't get to do that. So please, um, make your presentation nice. That sounds nice, though. It is. It is. Um, the caramelized onions, especially if you use red onions, and do it down in water rather than oil. It comes mm. out really nice and lovely, yummy. Sounds nice. And just to say that the husk from your nuts that you strain from your nut milk, do not throw them away. We wanna squeeze them out as tight as possible. And uh, these very husk, the husk, from the nut and the bean, when you make the bean milk, everything can go, to, can be combined together. And you can add a little bit of salt to that, a little bit of onion and garlic powder. Mix it up, squeeze it all out and keep it tightly squeezed um, and pressed in a container. And that after a couple of days, you leave it in the fridge, all the water will completely dry out. You will be able to slice that and cook it as your vegan meat. Oh. Yeah, and if you want to add, um, if you want to add some, uh, a little bit of lemon juice or something like that to it, you can, and it will also help to hold it nicely together and give it a nice, like, refreshing flavor. So that's the bean husk, as well as these husk from the milks, the, the nut milks all can go together and make meat or use it to make cookies or use it to make meatballs. The meat I'm telling you about will be very similar to a tofu, but 10 times firmer and tastier. Also, what are you gonna use all of this cream for that you're making today? So for our dinner this evening, we have still some of our stuff from last week, Monday. We're gonna grab that and we're gonna whop it up with the cream to make a nice creamy soup, right? Um, what else you could do is you could have your roasted vegetables or you could have your vegetables cut in large dices like you were gonna roast them and then you saute them and you pour your cream over the top and cook that down and you could cook it down until it becomes thick. You could then add your vegan cheese on the top. 
and mix it in and you could serve that as a nice lovely meal by itself or if you want to have it with some throw some pasta in that you could throw some pasta in that to make a nice dish with the pasta and the cream we are going to be doing some jamaican hard food right in with our cream so our cream in um our hard food in some cream um and we have the soup as well from from last week so we'll show you what we finished what we finally decided when we're completely finished with all our milks and creams and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end, I will be teaching you how to make an amazing dessert. And possibilities are, I'll probably teach you how to make condensed milk as well with some of this milk that you have here. Even though it's a coconut milk that we need for the condensed milk, so. Well, let's see, maybe we can use some of these thick creams. Right, is everybody steaming their um, onions now? Yes. Okay, I will wait. I will not run ahead. Can you use the steam water for the fire? And what the onion cream is also, onion and um, cashew cream is nice with crackers, especially if you make your own crackers. They're very, very nice. I made some herb um, crackers, which I use sweet potatoes as a base because it had no flour, no sugar, no fat, no flour. Yeah, um, sweet potato was the um, only thing that I used and added um, herbs. I added rosemary to mine and it was absolutely. Any questions so far from what we've done? I'll have to do a myrtle. Is anybody in the house? Hello. Yeah, yeah I had myrtle. Oh, good, good. People are in the house, but I suppose they're busy concentrating on steaming their onions.
Yes, mate. I hear something straight here. Are we together yet? You said you want to say some of the ammo, yes? No? Okay. Okay. Let me see if this avocado is good. And then you could add uh, avocado to your. Okay, yes. our, our onions are now ready. Okay, so we're going to start with the onion cream, yes? Yes, we're going to start with the onion cream. So what we do, put them in three onions in the blender. Yes, along with your lemon juice. One lemon, if it's a large one, you can use half. If it's a small one, a whole one. Um, okay, put all the six onions, yeah, or just have no, three. No, three. Three. Three pieces. So one three. and a half. Three onions. If you cook six, just use three. Oh, we, we only cook three. We cut them in okay. two. Well, then use one and a half, then we'll split it down and do the two. Oh, okay. The right. While you were all um, doing that, I have quickly um, browned and sauteed some onion rings. Ooh, nice. Right, and, th and this is just the white onions. I didn't use, I didn't have any red onions. With and the color is gorgeous. With a little bit of water, a tip of agave, and just let it um, caramelize in the pan. Mm. Right? So then you just put a, a couple of rings on that. You could also toast your um, some cashew nuts and put it on that, and you know your presentation will get you top marks from Sister Davina. Yes. <laughs> All right. So we have 
our onion here, what do we do next? Right, if you've got your onions, one and a half onions in your blender, mm -hmm. with half a lemon, if it's a large one, half. Uh, um, you got a Jamaican lime. They have a lot of juice in them. As little as they are, they're, they're loaded. Okay. Well, uh, just use, it's really to your taste. Um, and you add your salt. So a taste, um, salt to taste. Okay, so we're adding half a lime, which is a yep. lot of juice. Yep. Salt, we Salt, um, if you were using a whole, the three lemons, the three onions, you would use an eighth of a teaspoon. So you use, use your juice. We'll use as a pinch. Yes, a pinch. And put them all in your blender and blend them. Right. So just the onion, the lime, and salt. salt. Yeah. Water. And salt. Nothing else, just onion, salt, and lemon juice. Because we're doing the onion cream. Right. I'm going to turn, I'm going to go on mute so that it doesn't deafen you with my blender. Okay, we'll do the same. <laughs> Are we using the caramelized onion? No, you're not using caramelized onions. That's just for decoration. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Right, have you blended? Everybody blended? Vision, I don't get, I, it's just my, my onion is just chopped. What am I supposed to be expecting from the onion in the blender? The onion with the lemon juice, it just comes out as chopped onion. No, nope, it should come finer than that. I'll show you. It's this. Mm. Let me look on the big screen. Do that again, let's see. No. It's almost like a mush. Can Are I add a little oil add oil? Oil? water? No water, just the lemon juice and your onions. Are we supposed to add oil to the onion cream? Not yet, not yet. Once you've All got- right, I'm gonna add more lemon juice then. Maybe Once my blender is, my bullet just stopped working by the way, just burnt oh. out. Oh dear, you've overworked it. Yeah, it's busy. So if anyone has a spare bullet that they wanna donate, I am happy to accept. Just to let everyone know that you can share the message. It's too far to send it. Postage will be too high. You might as well buy a new one over there. Right, is everybody's looking like um, stewed, stewed apples? And it smells amazing. It does. Shall I taste it? You can do. It's sweet, isn't it? Mm. Onion and lemon. It's like sugar, isn't it? You can almost have it as it is. Right, are we ready to move on now? All right, so we've got the onion. 
got your onion, you've got your lemon juice, you've got your salt. Now, your, yeah. cup, your cup of oil, pour, depending, if you've got a, um, a blender that's got a hole at the top, you can pour your oil in a steady stream as you blend. If you haven't, and like Davina and myself, you use a neutral bullet, pour in about a quarter of the oil and blend, and then come back and pour in the other quarter or three quarters. Because you're not supposed to see any oil on the top of it. The oil is supposed to be all incorporated. So I poured in about just under a quarter of mine. It's gone more liquidy. I'm going to add some more oil. It's thickening up, so by the time you add the remainder of your oil, it should be thicker than when you first started. When do we add the cashews? No, we're not, we're not doing the cashew, we're doing the onion cream at the moment. Is that the first one that you started with? No, I, uh, I added the, on the, um, the cashews instead of, and the oil instead of not adding them. So I'm going backwards now uh, to the very beginning. Okay. So I've got here, right, the salt, the onions, the olive oil, lemon, that's it? Yes, that's the recipe. And if you blended it till it's um, like, like um, pureed apples, then you add your oil gradually. Right. Okay. Thank you. Sorry? Thank you. You're welcome. It tastes amazing. We're going to let you see ours. Oh, yeah. by the way, are we finished with it? Not quite. I'm so just finishing my... Huh? Oh, you, if you finish yours, you can pour it out into a container. So we have Keep the half of... We have Sorry? half the mixture. Remember, we still have one and a half onions to do the onion cashew cream. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So you can look, start... Look at it, look at it, look at it. Yep, yeah, that's it. That it is tastes it. amazing. Yep. Super. You're right. You're really busy. Is this how it's supposed to look? I can't see. Remember, oh, put fire under the no, not in the English. I don't know Yeah, that looks the right. It's like a thin, thin cream. Yeah. 
four and nine. Can everyone see? That's a thin cream. Je trouve on y a une zine. Mm -hmm. Oui, le droit, hein? tu sais, avec un euh, honey. What is that hard? I never put the money in my Are we done? What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? Unmute? No, you have to unmute. You're not mute at all. Done? Yeah. Any problems? Hello, hearing me? I can hear you. Where are we at, please? What are we supposed to be doing? You should be now finishing your onion cream, which is just the onion, onion, lemon juice, the salt, and the olive oil. That's what I finished. finished. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll take a yeah. picture. Are we ready to move on to the onion cream? 10 seconds, we're just about to take a picture of our onion cream. Smells good. Eugenie, have you done yours? Let's use it to go. Like Eugenia. I'm following. Okay, Eugenia. <laughs> I made the, um, this is the cashew onion. Oh, that looks nice. How could you use it so white? Um, maybe it's the kind of cashew. I use just the raw cashew. Okay. Right. And I suppose the, it's also the, what oil did you use? Pardon me? What oil did you use? Olive oil. It's a lighter, oh. it's a lighter olive oh. oil. Oh, okay. M mine is um, the extra virgin. That's the only one I had at the moment um, currently. So mine has a bit of a green tinge to it. That looks oh, okay. nice. Does it taste nice? Oh, it's delicious. <laughs> I bet you try it with crackers or on salad. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, salad, crackers, and pasta, you said, right? Yes, yes. Okay. It just, oh, I love I love it. My son does like it as well. He loves like, it. He's cool. like everything that I have made during that course, during the course, he has loved. It was only one thing, and that was the cheese. He didn't like the cheese because he's not very fond of um, vegan cheese. So everything else, he's thoroughly enjoyed. Right, I look forward to trying it with the pasta. Yes, <laughs> well done. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Vina? We posted ours, we posted ours in the classroom, our finished product. Okay. Um. Remember, I am not in your classroom this time. Oh, all right, hold on, let's add you to it. Uh, you've been invited. Thank you. All right, so now we add what, one cup of cashew to this onion cream. Yes. Uh, no, you've, you, you've used half. Remember, you've used half your recipe. So we we'll use half, half yes. the amount of cashew. Yes. Could we use almond? Sorry? Could we use almond? I don't know. I have not used it. Okay. Oh, well, maybe I not. The almond has, well, probably need to be straightened. What I have for, um, I think I've asked this question before from someone else. Um, almonds do not come out as creamy as cashews. Okay. I, um, you know, I'm sad to be corrected. No, you're right. But they have to be strained. It has it what? It has to be strained. Oh, okay. All right. So you've added your cashews to your um to your onions now. Yeah. yeah, all right, and you just blend it all in. And then you add your oil slowly to get it thick off. But you may not need um, all of the oil. Okay, um, question, can you repeat that? Is it that the one we made, because I've only made the um, the onion cream. That's Do I right. use half of that and add the one cup of cashews to that? No. No? No, you've got another, did you use um, half the recipe or did you use three onions? I use the three onions. So I've got another three onions here. So is that, I'm, I'm starting over with the, and adding the cashews as well now. Okay, I'll add the cashews to the um to the onions that you've got there. Okay. Along with your so lemon I'm, and your salt. I'm, okay, I'm following the same process, adding the oils and then adding the cashews or adding the cashew first. Adding the cashew first. Okay, and the oil last. Yeah, that's got to be poured in slowly. Have you got a, um? A, a blender that has a, a pouring hole at the top. I do. Okay, you're easy then. Thank you. Uh, you may not need to use all of the oils or just uh, keep it, so it's supposed to be thick. Right, okay. Lisa, you sound very much like Myrtle. Who, oh, Lisa? <laughs> yeah, you sound very much like Myrtle. Oh, where's Myrtle from? I, she lives in the US. Okay. I think she's 
Philip from Trinidad, stand to be corrected. Myrtle, are you there? Well, I am from Trinidad, so that would explain it if oh. she is from Trinidad. <laughs> it's the same accent you have. Uh, I, at first I thought you were her, till I look and saw it was, it was you. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Hello. We're here. Yeah, Are we're here, baby. We're here. Right. Are we ready to move on to the and their cashew and onion cream? Yeah. All right, I'm going to move on to the next one, onion cream. And for that, you need half of your onion cream and half of your onion and cashew cream. Okay. Um, for the onion cashew cream, we use, do we add the oil in at the same time? It's just the onion, some of the onion cream. What is yeah. it, some of the onion cream? The onion, with the onion and cashew cream, you do your onions and your cashew nuts together. Mm -hmm. And then and along with your lemon juice and your salt. Okay. And then, and then we add oil. Yes, you pour the oil in slowly, but Davina, if you've got a bullet like me, you've got to add it in portions. No, it just burnt out, so I'm using a jug blender. Okay, all right, so then you can um, yeah. add it slowly. It burnt out on the almond milk. Okay. So if anyone has made mayonnaise, it's almost like making mayonnaise. You just got to be careful you don't go over, otherwise it's going to either curdle or go too runny. Hello, Pastor Rassis.
Are we ready to move on? Yes. Ready to move on. Okay, what, what is it now we're gonna move on to now? Sorry? What is it we're gonna move on to? I'm going to move on to making the um double onion cream. Okay, double cream, okay. Yep. And what you need is half of your previous two mixtures, your onion cream and your onion and cashew cream. You need half of that. Yep. And a quarter cup of oil. And you pour the oil in slowly and blend till it becomes thick, like double cream. Again, you may not need to use all of your oil because, and I think I've used a little bit too much of mine. It's gone a bit runny. Suppose what you could do, you could add um, some of your onion cream, which is thick or your other um, onion and cashew nut to make it, um, bring it back to being thick. Mine went a bit too thick. I mean, that's a bit too thin. So be careful when you're pouring in your oil. Mine tastes amazing. Good, good, I guess good. you could add back some soft cashew as well. Yep. Right. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I've done. I hope you like. Thank you. And I hope you enjoy and get great fun and pleasure out of your course. Because this is your second week now, isn't it? Can I see your cream again? Say it, Bajan. And just give me a sec. It's a little bit runny. But I think I use a little bit too much oil, but it will thicken up in the fridge. Did you see? Let's see it again. It's supposed okay. to be thicker than that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I didn't let you see my cream. Can you see mine? With wow. my. Wow. Ooh, that looks like a bowl of soup. Ah, yeah, because it, uh, the oil, I use a little bit much, too much oil. Yep, and that's it. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Continue to enjoy your cooking. Thank you very much, Benjamin Beauty. I'm going to send you a lovely picture now because you just I was going to send you a nice picture with my Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see what's cooking. Yep, yeah, I've got your first one. All right, just a moment.
Mine could do with a little bit more salt, but it's nice. Okay, is it all right for me to leave? I have another meeting pending. Thank you very much, Beijing Beauty. We're okay. just finishing up here and then I'll come on. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Bye. You're welcome. So everyone get your tofus out. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Uh, Davina, are you available? Just give me a second now, be in a second. Okay. Okay, all right. Yes, I am now available. Um, I'm just gonna, um, your soup looks beautiful. It looks delicious. What did you garnish it with? I'm not sure. What soup? Wasn't it an onion cream? It's, oh, it's not a soup, oh, sorry. It's my onion cream. So it's a, it's a caramelized onions. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's a caramelized oh. onions. Okay, sorry, just it looks like a bowl of soup. <laughs> uh, no, but are we trying to do that over here though? Okay, thanks for mm -hmm. that. Yeah. All right, so we're ready now for the next item. Who is, who is ready to do the low fat cream? Let me get myself on screen. You could see me without the light in the background. Davina, I have the items for the sour cream. Um, so does the low fat cream. Okay, so you've got your tofu on your milk. Wonderful. Bear me a moment. I got the firm, it says silken tofu, but I wasn't sure if it was supposed to be the soft, firm, extra firm, because it just said tofu, so. Oh, any tofu is fine. Even it, it's a silken one that gives you the best texture and consistency, but even the rough ones I've used and I've gotten really good results. And I most often use the rough one because it works out more cost-effective for me here in Jamaica. Okay. What what ingredients do you need to make the mayo? That's the vegan mayo. Okay, so I'm gonna be sharing. I'm gonna be sharing my screen at the moment.
Davina, if you're speaking, we can't hear you. Oh, sorry, Michelle. I no, I wasn't speaking. I was searching for. Are you able to see my screen and see the the um, the vegan nutrition ebook? Are you seeing it? Yeah. Okay. So now that's the onion cream. All the recipes are in the book. I'm going to share with you from here. So for a sour cream, right? You could have uh, your basic cashew cream that we've just made. To that, you would add two teaspoons of lemon juice, juice from two teaspoons of lemon, and you would allow it to sit on the counter for 12, overnight, 12 to 24 hours. And you cover it with a cheesecloth or something that covers it, but it's aerated where it could breathe, right? And um, you stir it and then you place it in the fridge and it will really thicken up. And that's your sour cream that you could use in dips, that you could use in, you could use as a dip, you could use it when, for example, when is it tomorrow? So it would be good for you to make your sour cream for tomorrow. And you could use this one here. There's another sour cream, which is on the, the recipe that I sent out for, for preparation tomorrow. But you could use this one, right? You could use this one because you've already got it made and you could just keep that recipe for another time, but you could use this sour cream. Right, so um, you could use this for tomorrow to eat with your nachos, to top on top of your chili con carne, or if you do something like a vegan version of chicken paprika, which is a very um, popular Eastern European um, style dish. Very nice, by the way. So here's your sour cream. Right, so to your cashew cream, which we've just made, you add two teaspoons of lemon juice or lime juice to the basic cashew cream, and you allow it to sit on your counter for 12 to 24 hours. And your basic cashew cream would be about a cup. Let's just go back up. By the way, the, the husk from your, from, your, from your nuts and stuff can use to make those that I've just passed. Okay. The okara balls and the cookies, that's what your husk can be used to make. Your onion cream right there, your onion cashew cream. Let, let me go down and see if I'll see the basic cashew cream. Sweet cream. What you would do we got for your sweet cream, you would add maple syrup and vanilla, right? So you wanna use your vanilla extract or you use a pure vanilla beans. You wanna add that um, to your sweet cream. So that would be, you could use your basic cashew cream or you could use a tofu cream, which we're gonna do shortly right, to make your sweet cream. Your sweet cream, you wanna serve with your desserts. So you can make a fruit salad. You can make a nice big fruit salad with everything diced up, medium, small to me, maybe medium dice, right? So you can have them in bite-sized pieces, two pieces or so could hold in a spoon, two to three pieces could hold in a spoon that you could put in your mouth in one go, that sort of size. And then after you make that fruit salad, then you wanna, um, Use a sweet cream in the place of a mayonnaise. So you use a sweet cream to mold everything there and um, bound it together in a bound salad-like type or compound salad that we've discussed um, on the day three of the course when we did um, salads. So you would use that in a food salad like that and you could mold it. You could use a mold to shape it when you're plating it. So something like a cookie ring, you could put a cookie ring on a plate and then just fill it with the salad and um, 
garnish that with maybe some mint leaves and a piece of strawberry or cherries and, and mint. Now we're going to do the low right. fat. Okay. What is the measurement for the maple syrup and vanilla or you just add it to taste? Oh, you want to add to taste and you're looking because it depends on how much you have as well. But you, you, this is something you can just taste. So you want to add from a tablespoon up, two tablespoons. You may have children that you know have a sweet tooth and um, you may want to add even more than two tablespoons. For myself, a quarter tablespoon, a drizzle would probably be fine. But you know, everybody have different taste buds. So you just add um, sweetener to taste because this is something that is, you don't need to cook it, right? So you can taste it comfortably. And um, now the low fat cream, if you have your tofu, you want to undo your camera so I could see you. Ah, lovely. All right, lovely Lisa and lovely Michelle. All right, so, so for your tofu, right? We use, uh, did I just, we use one, a packet of the silken tofu. Um, you want to do that, Chrisan? You want to do that cream? They wanted the tofu. We just bought some tofu, one packet of single tofu. The, the bullet stops work, stop working. So you have to use a jug blender. So you need one, one, and what we're gonna make first is a a low fat um cream which you can use in your pastas, you can use it in your so so soups and sauces. But this is, this cream is for someone who is probably have a heart transplant, probably have triple bypass heart surgery, who cannot take any sort of fat or anything like that. So this sort of cream, the low fat cream is something that I would recommend for them. You may not use this cream much in your own personal cooking. However, if you're a medical missionary or you're a nutritionist on here, you may find that this cream may come in handy when you're doing meal plans, um, meal plans for your clients, or you're doing catering and you have to and you have to cater for a client. And believe you me, it does happen. I've had that situation where at a wedding, I was asked to cater for someone who has done three heart surgeries and their last surgery was a triple bypass. And I'm thinking, oh dear, they cannot eat any sort of oil, nothing processed. Everything has to be made from scratch with organic ingredient. And I'm telling you, no salt, no nothing. And the food must taste good and look nice because it's a wedding. So you never know what you may be faced with when you go out there on the field, right? So this is a cream, and, and by the way, it's the basis for a lot of other creams. So get this one correct. One, one um, packet, and this is one cup, but it's, it's one packet of silk and tofu. Throw that in your blender with one cup of, and you wanna use maybe a bottled water, you know, some sort of distilled water or so. Should I strain off the water in the tofu? Yeah, the water that it comes with, you could strain it off and you could give it a little rinse. By the way, just put it in your strainer and give it a little rinse to rinse that water off because sometimes that water, you know, it doesn't always taste nice. And, and by the way, you know, all those creams that we just made with Harriet, I've just poured them over my corn. And if you want to add some spring onion in your pot, so you could actually throw those in the pot with a little bit more water, bring them to a, bring it to a gentle boil, add some spring onion in it and a piece of, you know, fresh chili or cayenne, but don't cut it, just whole, just to really give it that, that essence. You could add a little bit of yeast flakes to it as well. And you can serve that as a nice piece of soup.
just looking at these milks and I can't wait to go and drink a glass. All right, so you, you put that in your in your blender with your water, your one cup of water with your one packet of tofu. Blend it now until it is smooth. You could use those cups. The metal one is a one cup size. And the dish drainer. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. And it's going to be thick. So when you're finished, you just get a spoon and spoon some up so I could see it. I'm just showing this to you, Davina. I hope you can see, because I can't. Nice, yes, that's, that's, that's good, Michelle. Yeah, so you have a nice cream there. Yes, Lisa, that's nice, perfect. That's perfect. So you have, um, so I tell you what, you make a nice pancake, right? Like a lentil pancake, which, the recipe is probably in the ebook. We won't be doing it that, at this class, um, but you make a nice pancake. You could serve that cream with it, right? As it is, it's a nice loaf of cream. How does it look? It has zero taste at the moment, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was about to say. I'm like, it looks good, but. Yeah, it has no taste. So now how you can flavor this, so with cream, cream is, you know, most of the times sort of on the blender side, and then you could add some flavor to it. So you could add salt to this cream, but obviously, you know, if you have your triple bypass heart patient, uh, you, you don't add any salt to his, <laughs> right? But what you could do is add, um, you could add some spring onion, right? To that, to help to improve the flavor. Now, you could split that cream now in two because we're going to be doing, uh, so you could take some out, right? We're going to use some to do a spin off of the sweet cream. And then we're going to use some to turn into mayo from savory cream to mayo. So you could take half out. Let me grab my water in the meantime. The texture looks really nice, doesn't it, with the silk and tofu? Anybody hear me? Yes, yes it does that. look nice. It looks really smooth. And silky. Yes. So you could use that as a type of single cream. Right? You could use it as a type of single cream right there. No fat whatsoever. Now the half that you have in the blender, you're gonna keep, yeah, so put, the, put half aside, put half one side. Yeah. Somebody said something? So the half that you have in your blender. I was about to say something. <laughs> I was about to, okay, I was about to, are you sending anything to the class? Any pictures? 
Oh, take your pictures, take your pictures, take your pictures, take your pictures, Kristen. You could use um this this phone over here. I'll put it on this table and let me take a good picture. And can is it possible to see to see you as you are making it? Because now we are just seeing the recipe. You're supposed to be making it. You're here at a cooking class. I talk you through the recipe. You're supposed to be an active student. We demonstrate some things. We don't demonstrate everything. And it has just been made in my kitchen. Oh, I've got two okay. students here. Yeah, but I'm going to take a picture of it for you. But can you not see the other students on your screen if you wanted to see it? It's, it's, it's the same thing that I would have done. So I'm taking a picture of this one. No, no. It's very nice. I'm going to get a spoon and just lift some up so I take it while it's lifted. I'm just getting some good pictures for you. Um. I don't want to see the back of the spoon. Here's the next one. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Thanks. Let's see. All right. Yeah, I'm going to post a picture in the group now so you can see the consistency. So that's low fat soya cream. It's definitely thicker than a single cream. It's more of a double cream consistency. Mm. You see that in the group, I'll, I'll share them on the screen afterwards. So now, now, right, you have the rest left in your blender. You're gonna get, you're gonna season this, right? Now you're gonna add, have you got your egg salt? Pink, you need some pink Himalayan salt, you need some egg salt. Uh, what is egg salt? Is that black salt? Yeah, that's the black, black salt, yeah. And if you don't have that? You can do without, just pink Himalayan. But because we're going to turn this into a mayo. Just to let you know, your face isn't being seen. It's just kind of dark because you're facing a window. You're back to the window. Uh, yeah, let me turn it on. Okay. All right. So if you don't have the egg salt, you can use just your pink Himalayan salt or your sea salt. And you're going to use about a quarter teaspoon or about a quarter teaspoon of salt. You can always after, add it after if you, if you need to add more salt to it. Davina, here. I've got, the, I've got the black salt. How much of the black salt do I add? Okay, so I would add a little bit more of the black salt than the pink salt. I would add about a, okay, a quarter teaspoon and then... You can use equal amount of pink or a little bit less. Okay. But you want to smell that black salt. Say that again. You want to smell and taste that black salt. Okay. So a quarter teaspoon of both, but I can add a little more of the pink salt, you said, or less? No, a little less of the pink salt or a little more of the black salt. But because you're only oh. using half the mixture, and we don't want it too salt because we want you to be able to eat it. Um, right. <laughs> right. It's better to add more afterwards. Okay. My neighbor who I have been encouraging to eat vegan, um, just cooked some vegan curry and sent me a bowl. <laughs> so that's wonderful. I'm going to mix that, some of my cream in it when I'm finished. <laughs> when I'm finished, that's what, it looks good. 
That's awesome. All right. What yeah. else? So you, okay, go ahead. If you have onion powder and garlic powder, this is where you can add a quarter teaspoon of onion powder, quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. And if you have liquid amino, this is stepping it up even a further notch. Add a dash of liquid amino. Or some people may just have Mrs. Dash. I don't even know if, I don't know how credible Mrs. Dash is, but I see it in a lot of vegan shelves. Never really stopped to read it for myself, but if you have it and you want to, and it is something that you use and you want to give it a try, you can go ahead. But we use, you could use some liquid amino. You put it already, okay. And um, you want to use about, for that amount, about a half a lime juice, juice from half a lime. This is the liquid aminos, right? Perfect. Yep. That's it. And how much did you say? A dash. A dash. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to be learning new measurement terms whenever Davina cooks. <laughs> because, you know, in the kitchen, we must not walk around with so much measuring this and measuring that. And <laughs> I hear you. Yes, yes, yes. I'm teaching you to be freehand. Yeah, rolling the lemon, yes, to get the most out of it. Excellent, yeah. And how much lemon did you say? Half, just from about half. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. so just kick the seeds out and squeeze it in. Yeah. Okay. Lime or lemon would be better? Oh, any one that you have is fine. You just don't want too okay. much. You don't want too much. I know probably lime have a whole lot. I mean, lemon has a whole lot. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Do we blend? You're gonna blend. Yes, you're gonna blend for about 20 seconds just to mix everything in nicely. Just to make sure everything is mixed in nicely. You're gonna blend. And then you're gonna add the oil and blend again. You can add the oil all together or slowly add the oil. You'll get a better result. You're gonna see how that becomes thick and fluffy, like a mayonnaise. Oil? Um, normally I, I start with a, normally let me get outside because cooking is going on here as well. Normally I start with a quarter cup of oil and I don't always use all of it. So if you have the blender with the hole on the top, this is where you want to use, utilize that blender with a hole on the top. So, um, I'm trying to find a good background. I'm on a veranda, so it's very hard for you not to get the light. Oh, let me sit over this side. Okay, that's better. Yeah, so normally I would start off with about a quarter cup of um, oil and I'm pouring it while I'm blending and you will see that it gets thick. You don't always have to use the whole quarter cup, but the more oil, the fluffier, but then the blend is going to get to the stage whenever it starts. Oh, you can use the olive oil or you can use the coconut oil. It's nice in it, but the olive oil, because once you put it in the fridge, the coconut oil becomes really hard. Olive oil or something lighter. So you will see getting thick and fluffy. Blend it on high speed and then low speed. I think it's low speed for this one. Low 
Low speed, then high speed? No, I think high speed, then low speed. Okay. Yeah. And you may even have to just pulse and let go, pulse and let go. Uh-oh, computer on. Low battery. Yeah, Lisa, is it getting nice and thick? Let me see that, Michelle. Enough. It's not ready? It's not, it's not thick. Let me see it. Um, I think, I don't know if this is thick enough. Mm, um, it's thick, but it needs more oil. It's, it's, how much? Did you use a quarter cup of oil? I use all of it. All of it. I only have, and my, it's, only have a little bit of oil left over. All right, but do you get it thick like, oh, it's a bit still, Runny? Yeah, I, I find so. All right. Um, have you got any of the other tofu? I have another package. Well, I have, yeah, the one that you, I put aside. The thick, the thick one. The one that I had put aside to make it half? No, not that one, because that has a water in it, but just a pure tofu. Yeah, I have, to, I have another package. Just cut a small piece and, and drop in the mix. Okay. Mm -hmm. Davina? Or? Yeah. I, Sorry. I think mine looks like Michelle. Yes. Um, hold on. Don't, uh, don't do anything as yet. Just hold a moment. Let me give mine a try in the kitchen and see, all right? Okay. Yeah. Give me another. Thank you. 
All right, it is still not as, it is still not as thick as I would like it. However, when you put this in the fridge tonight, tomorrow it's gonna be really thick where you can spoon it. You'll be able to sort of like cut a spoon out of it. That's how thick it will get tomorrow. What I just did though, I just added a handful of cashew, soaked cashew nuts to mine. However, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna look for another recipe in my, in my books. Let me just see if I find that in my phone. I um, share with you. And I think I get a better result when I use the thicker tofu. But really, I don't know why this one is not coming out because I've done it before several times. But the thing is with this, the lesser amount of water you use, the better the results. So if we had started with, with just the tofu, like one packet of tofu with about quarter cup or half cup of water, we would see a different result. No, you have extra tofu. You can add extra tofu to yours. I don't have any extra tofu. You, you have extra tofu, Lisa? Add extra tofu to yours. So normally, right, normally I would use, let's say one packet of tofu to about quarter cup of water and then quarter cup of oil. I know that ratio works perfectly well, but this we've already added. You have about half a cup of water here. Add, the, add, add another half packet of the tofu to, to what you have here and see. Okay. I, I also think it needs a little more salt. I don't know. Oh yeah, I just added more of the egg salt to mine. The one that I have in the okay. kitchen. I just added some more of the egg salt to it here when I tasted it, yeah. Again, Divina, it's your face, your back is to the window so we can't see you. Not well. <laughs> All right. All right. So try that with the with the extra piece of tofu, and let's see how that comes out. Don't want to end up using your whole tofu. Or right, Lisa, yours is a lot in your jug. How about using just half of it? Because what you have there can be used as a nice salad dressing. Yeah, and by the way, what you have there, both of you in the jug right now, can be used mm -hmm. as a salad. Let me tell you additional stuff that you could actually put in this that you have. You could put mm -hmm. fresh, onion, fresh spring onion, right, in it and just, just blend them. You could put basil leaf as well in it and just, mm -hmm. just and you'll get a nice like, a tint of a greenish color, obviously from the, the fresh herbs, right? But it would go perfect as a salad dressing with your salads on your table. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So you said just put half of the tofu. Put half and let's try it with half and see. Okay. You get it, much, Lisa? Much better, much better. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's see. And spoon it, let's see. Ah, cool. Yeah, yeah. You're getting there, yeah. It could, it could be a little more blending, so it's still a little bit rough. Okay, yeah. Blend it. Yeah. And I'm going to add, add a little. 
So it will thicker, and then you store that in a jar and you use it in place of your mayo. Nice. Um, turn it, turn it sideways. Let's see it drop. Okay, that's 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 that that's nice, Michelle. That's nice. Even if you wanted to to add a bit more, yeah, yeah. It looks and if you wanted to add a bit more um tofu, thicker, you could. Okay, I'm, I think I wanted yeah a little bit more thicker. Yeah, so add a piece of piece, add the other piece of tofu to it, yeah. But it looks good. You check your fridge if you have. You have the rough tofu, if you have any from left back, and you just put a piece of that because that one is very thick. Yeah, that's much better. And I'll, I'll add the, um, the, the spring onions and so on in it. Yeah, yeah, you can always step it up with with those, just literally taking it to another level. You serve that on your table yes. with a knife. It's gonna be finished in no time. <laughs> Sorry, can you share about the spring onion? I didn't hear that part. Oh, I was saying what you have there, when you had it liquid, when you had it, when it was more. Um, it, when it's more runny, you could turn it into a salad dressing. You could use it as a salad dressing and, um, you could add your spring onion to it. You could add garlic to it. You could even add basil to it. You could also add like your dried mixed herb to it, like a pinch of dried mixed herb um, to it when you have it as your salad dressing. It tastes really nice. But even as your mayo, you could add some of those to it. But obviously now it's moving away from the normal mayo flavor to, to some really um, fancy mayo. <laughs> All right, so that's the, from the low fat cream to a salad cream to a mayo. Now the other half of cream that you have there, we're gonna try, let's see what we have here. Okay, so all the creams are not written here, half of them missing out of this. Oh, the sweet cream, okay, the sweet cream and the sour cream. So the other half of cream that you have there, we're gonna try some of it as a sour cream. Right, and you're gonna add the juice from a lemon, and you could add it to the basic cashew cream, or you could add it to that tofu, the rest of that tofu mixture that you have there. So that tofu mixture that you have there, you could actually, the rest of it, you could actually split that again now in two, right? And one we're gonna make by turning it into sweet cream by adding the honey or agave and um, a splash of lemon juice to it, and just mix that, and you're gonna see that and vanilla or you can add a little bit pinch of cinnamon or a little pinch of nutmeg if you use those things right and you will get a nice sweet cream which you could use with desserts and then for sour cream you're gonna leave the the put a lime juice in it and just leave it for 24 hours and the next day you could use it and you could use this sour cream as well in recipes that call for yogurt. So for example, even in your bread, you know that pita bread that we made on day one, when you made this, make this basic sour cream, you could use it in place of the yogurt or even in place of the coconut cream. But obviously we need to make enough to do that. It will make it nice and soft and fluffy. Okay, so Davina, this is when I added the rest of my tofu. Yeah, it looks nice and it's thicker. And when you leave that, you put it in a bottle. So you put it in your nice jar, 
Yeah. Yeah. And you put that in your fridge. Tomorrow you're going to see it much thicker than it is now. So sorry, this is the vegan mayo. That's the vegan mayo. So you've just moved that from the low fat cream to salad dressing to mayo. I can definitely add more seasoning to it, correct? Because it tastes kind of... Oh, yes, please. Why don't you add the seasoning to it before you bottle it? Add yeah, more I'm going to powder, add it more garlic powder. Yeah. Add, um, I sometimes put the grounded pimento in mine, but I don't put all of that in my mayo. I put those mostly in my salad dressing. I keep my mayo really simple. But... You can add more stuff to it. Grounded pimento, I sometimes add. So let me just put here what I normally add. Sometimes I add to mine, right? So my onion powder, it's sometimes the fresh one, sometimes both. I put the um, allspice, grounded allspice. I put cumin, it's amazing with cumin. Cumin powder, mixed herb. Yeah, so these are some of the things that I, 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 I often um, put in mine. So I said I had increased the egg salt to the proportion that um, we just did. All right, so we want to try the sweet cream. And the liquid amino, if you add that liquid amino to it, it makes it
Some people also add yeast flakes. I, I, I don't, because I'm allergic to yeast flakes. I'm allergic to yeast, full stop. So I don't really use yeast flakes for that purpose. But if you use it and you want to give a little bit of yeast flakes a try, you can put a pinch of yeast flakes or a teaspoon of yeast flakes in it. Are we... Um, with those With adding the herbs, the vina, do I mix it in or blend it in? Oh, you blend it in, man. If you can bl blend it in and you get more flavor faster. Okay. All right, so the sweet cream is almost the same process, but you want to put the honey, right. a little splash of lemon, and... Um, honey, splash of lemon, and a little vanilla. So that's the basis for the sweet cream. Let me just see if that is here. And maybe, okay, so maple syrup or honey. Or agave. You want more? You want your All right, so with that, I, I just looked at the time and realized we're one hour and seven minutes over the time. So we're gonna conclude class, but I just wanna see you finish with, finish with your mayo or finish with this thing, whatever you have in the blender, let's finish it. We can, we can add some pasta. We can boil some pasta or some potato with that. All right, how are we?
This is mine, Davina. I added the spring onion and the garlic. Let's see it, Lisa. Let's see that again. Nice. Yep. So once you leave it overnight, you're going to see how thicker it's going to get. Tomorrow you take another picture. Okay. If it lasts that long. All right, and then this we can use, you can even use this as a salad dressing, right? If you want a thicker dressing. Yeah, so if you, yeah, you can add, um, if you want it thicker than that, like if you want a proper thick for a mayonnaise, this is the ratio and the consistency for a, a mayo. Mm -hmm. It's one packet of tofu, and I use mostly the, the normal one that you would use to cook with, that hard one that you get in the Asian shops. I use mostly that, right? So it's one packet of that to about quarter cup of water and you blend that until you can get it as smooth as you can. And then you add the oil, but obviously your seasoning. So like your egg salt, but in terms of the main ingredients, um, it, that's the ratio. So it's a quarter cup of water to a quarter cup of oil or the most a half cup of water, but never one cup. So with the sweet one now, Davina. Yes. We put it back into the blender. Yes, you're gonna put it back into the blender and you're gonna add to it either your maple syrup or your honey or your agave, and you're gonna add vanilla and you can add a little splash of lime. Okay. That, the, while that bit, while the lime is optional, when you do it, you can do some without the lime and then taste it and add the lime, and you'll see the difference in terms of taste. Okay, I don't have any um extract, any vanilla. Okay, so that's fine. Once it, the agave is in it, you will see it will go nice with desserts. You make your cake, okay. you bake your cake, you can serve this with your cake. So you okay. make your fruit cake at Christmas time. You serve some cream with it. This is what you would serve with it, right? Okay. And um, how much of the agave? Uh, start with two tablespoons. Okay, thanks. And that's the cream we made earlier, right? The plain one. Sorry, say that again. Yeah, the plain one that you had set aside. Okay. Yeah. And this is the sweet cream that I blended up. Okay, let's see that. Okay, yeah, that's it. That's the texture. No, no, to get that thicker where you use it like a sweet cream mayonnaise you would do the same thing, but as it is, you pour that over pancakes, you serve that with your cakes. You can pour that over pancakes, you can serve it with your cakes as it is, right? Um, you can use it with your desserts, just as it is. Okay. Now, if you wanna make it thicker, like a mayonnaise consistency, do the very same thing that you just did for the mayonnaise, add another tofu and the oil. And 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 um, blend slowly. Chris on.
I'm just sharing another recipe with you that you could take a screenshot of. Okay, so this is an even another one. Just take a screenshot of this and you can do this at in your own time. And this, let me see if I find a picture with the texture, no. Yeah, you can add more sweetener, four tablespoon maybe. How does that taste? Lisa, I see everybody coming for a taste. <laughs> it tastes great. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I like to see that. But I can see that if I added maybe some vanilla or something else to it, uh, kind of yeah. spike it up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Because it tastes good with just the agave. So I can imagine if I was to put something else. Exactly. If you make yeah. some rose water and um, some bay leaf extract and mm -hmm. um, what else? Your cinnamon put some cinnamon powder mm. or okay. if you have cinnamon essential oil you drop a couple of drops in it it will be amazing which, which essential oil? cinnamon okay i've got the powder yeah add a bit of powder to it a little bit of nutmeg your cardamom if you have cardamom essential oil as well a couple of drops really bring the flavor elevates the flavor and that's what you add into the sweet one I yeah mm -hmm. on so this is another one this what i have on this sweet on it here this is another um sweet cream showing you another way how to use your beans so you can take a picture of this um i have all my i'm compiling all my food powerpoints of recipes combining all of them it's no not just food but like on the the lectures that we go through on this course i'm compiling everything together in a book so for example when we do the lecture like we did the lecture on beans today just showing you up different ways how you can get the beans into your diet um i have the the recipes compiled together um you know, so this one is this one is a brownie, a very nice brownie with the wild rice and the black beans. Doesn't get better than that. And then the bean used to make the cream. All right. So I hope everybody got a shot of that one. No, please. Let me just have that one, please. Yeah. Let me make it bigger. My aquafaba. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Are we finished? Yes. Thank you. All right. So when I say thick aquafaba, it means that it means that you need to reduce the aquafaba. So you need to put it on low to medium heat and just let it boil a little bit open so some of the water can evaporate so it becomes viscous, right? And then that aquafaba you cool and you use it in the recipe. So as we get into um, the lessons on aquafaba, you will learn more about aquafaba. And then, um, but for the time being, just giving you that information. So thick aquafaba, I mean, you just boil it down a bit and let it become viscous and you use it. And if you add a few of the cooked chickpeas to it, it becomes as well like a thick mayo once you whip the aquafaba. And your quarter cup of soaked cashew, one tablespoon of almond. If you don't have the almond flour, you could just use some soaked I guess you could use some soft almond. Um, 
but it would, I'm not sure how much soap almond you would need to use our almond flakes, um, our toasted almonds, um, handful of sprouted black bean. Yep, you sprout the black bean or the black urid. You could sprout it and a quarter cup of olive oil or any oil and one cup of sweetened soy milk. Blend until smooth and enjoy with your sweet treats. All right, um, that's one. All right, everybody, Lisa, Michelle, are you all happy at the moment? Okay, no problem, sis. Yeah, Michelle and Lisa? Yep, I think I'm okay. I just have one question. I know you- Go ahead. In the in the uh, in the in the group to be able to view other programs like for example the Friday with the veggie roast how do we bring that on our computer can I just forward it to my computer or do I need to go into the YouTube to be able to see those videos um no you we 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 put it in the group we have sent the lessons for last week in the group. But um, if I've missed any, I can go back and send them. There's another menu I've just sent through. Okay, so this um, recipe, shall I share this on the screen with you? And you can take a screenshot, maybe you'll miss it. I doubt anyone will miss this. This is my favorite. How do I get this big? Okay, seem like I can't get it big. This one is my favorite um, vegan mayo. So it's a half a block of tofu and anytime means any type. <laughs> All right, but as I said, I mostly use the rough one, the one that you will cook with. I mostly use that one and um, to a quarter cup of water and a quarter cup of oil, half a teaspoon pink Himalayan salt or sea salt, one teaspoon black Indian salt. Yeah, so I was being too modest just now. Uh, <laughs> one teaspoon cumin powder, one teaspoon pimenta powder, one teaspoon Indian mixed herb. Not Indian, sorry, Italian, Italian, Italian. <laughs> And one teaspoon, one tablespoon liquid amino, or obviously if you don't have liquid amino and you have soy sauce and you use soy sauce, then you can use one tablespoon of soy sauce. The juice from one lime or one lemon. Garlic, onion, celery are good combinations of herbs that can be used instead of the above if you haven't got them. So like your garlic powder, your onion powder, your celery powder, these are celery salt these these i have used as well in the past in other other mayonnaise recipes and they come out absolutely amazing but this one when i made it that day this is what i had made with the liquid amino and it is outstanding throw everything in the blender and blend for 30 to 60 seconds or until thick and creamy and delicious there we go you're taking a screenshot of this one. Let me copy and paste this one to your ebook. Let me. Yeah. All right. Some. I'm sorry. I'm still. I'm looking for the. The the one from Friday with the grain loaf, the recording of it. I don't see it in the chat. Oh yeah, I posted it and Lloyd posted it immediately after me. So they're, they're, they're like one second apart. On Friday, right? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll have a look back.
Yes, Dubina, I am happy. <laughs> oh, the wonderful. Item, very nice. The children are liking it. Excellent. They're just, that... they're just not too happy. They had to wait too long to eat. <laughs> uh, I know, I know, I understand. Let me find a space for this. Now this whole do document is going to just ship up, ship up, ship up, ship up. But I'm going to put it, let me insert a text box. All right, so I'm going to add that, that last recipe, even though that last recipe is for my recipe book, but I'm going to add it here. I'm going to add it in the... I'm trying to find a place to put this recipe. Okay, all right, but it needs to be longer than this. Thank you so much, Divina. I gotta run now, so thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, shall we pray? Would you like to pray for us before you go? I, I think we're done. Okay, let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we just want to praise you and thank you for this day that we have spent in the kitchen and learning more about what to put in our bodies. We are truly grateful and we're grateful for the knowledge in which you have indeed given to your daughters in Zion to be able to teach Amen. us all of these nutritious ways of eating. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that as we make these dishes that you will indeed change the taste buds of our family members that they will enjoy the food and they will want more because we know that our bodies you need to use them for your honor and for your glory to so help us to always put what is right in there. We thank you for this course and for everybody who is listening and will listen and will do these programs. May you bless them abundantly. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Before we go, um, just quickly, for tomorrow's lesson, just want you to prepare yourselves beforehand for um, tomorrow's lesson. So we're having a Mexican cuisine tomorrow. And we're gonna be doing chili con carne. So if you have mince, um, the dried, deep fatted organic non-GMO soya mince, which you can get, by the way, at um, House of Natural Foods or at the ABC. Um, chili con, um, you wanna have a, some red kidney beans, maybe a tin or two tins are all are cooked. About 600 grams of cooked red kidney beans. Um, you wanna have lots of tomatoes. You wanna have coriander. Um, you wanna have an avocado for guacamole, even though we don't have to do the guacamole tomorrow, but definitely we'll be doing the, the chili con carne. And we'll be doing the salsa. And we will definitely be doing the tortilla chips. Guacamole, you could do on your own. We will definitely be doing the tortilla chips, which you will need some cornmeal for. All right, some cornmeal for, for the um, tortilla chips and some flour. If, you do, if you're gluten-free, you could have some gluten-free flour and some flax meal, right? So just have these um, ready for class. Remember, have the beans already cooked. Beans already cooked, and if it is minced, if it is a dry soy means have it dehydrated, I mean rehydrated and drained, right? And if it is a corn mince, just have it defrosted. If you don't want to use any mince and you want to use lentils, that's fine. We gotta go ahead and use lentils. Okay. Or if you want to use walnuts, go ahead and give them a rough, rough chop beforehand if you want to use walnuts. So there we go. I hope to see you tomorrow. Have some honey for class as well. We're going to be making a cream flan. 
We may use some of the cream that we have today. Um, I think the recipe I will post if it has not been posted already. And then you can look and see which one of your creams that you use today you could use to substitute. Actually, this flan is from, um, is from, is from coconut cream. So you want to have the coconut milk, full fat. And then you want to have some soya milk or, or your bean milk, which I will voice note the bean milk, by the way, and the soya milk recipe. Or I'll probably share a video that you could, that you could watch from one of the previous classes. Good night, everyone. Thank you.